Our starting pitchers for tonight's game, Sean Estes makes the start for the Giants, and Mike Hampton is on the mound for the New York Mets. So Giants, Jeff Gant, right here, Camp wins the ball game against the Mets in San Francisco. A walk-off home run for the Giants. They can't have any one of those great years. 102 runs batted in. Alfonso, of course, having a good year for the Mets, but not quite up to what Jeff Kent has been doing. Kent has had 100 RBIs in his last four seasons. Only one other second baseman has done that in Major League Baseball history, Charlie Garinger of the Detroit Tigers. This night here at Shea Stadium, who else would be involved in our pregame show? But Sean, oh, Kimmerling. Thanks very much. It hits off the angled retaining wall, bounces sideways, and goes over the fence for one of the more bizarre home runs of the season. The very next night, another strange play at Enron, another fly ball. This time a fan reaches out and grabs it. Should have been a home run, but it ended up a triple. And then last night at Shea, Hamilton, the opposite field shot, bounces into the stands, fan grabs it. Darrell, what's going on? Some kind of weird baseball karma? How do you explain it? I can't explain it. I mean, it's, it's weird just being back in there, but the fact that, uh, you know, the first three hits I had just coming back with kind of strange plays is, uh, is a little bit surprising at this point. Also in the field uh, in Houston, I think it was Thursday, you're running the outfield. Jeff Bagwell hits the ball. A fan gets in between you and the baseball. Yeah, I thought I had a good chance of catching that, but uh, I guess I, I don't have the hops like I used to. But, uh, you know, I hit the fan's uh, hand when I came up with the glove, and, uh, you know, I guess it's there. Is their side of the fence when he gets over there, but uh, it's been kind of strange for me, but fun as well. The umpires have received the lineup cards. Mark Wagner's got the plate tonight. Tim Reynolds at first. Scott Higgins will be at second, and Charlie Williams, the Not veteran umpire at third base, who had the plate last night. Hazy night around Shea Stadium. Uh, no rain. Wind will be blowing in, and it has cooled off a lot compared to the uh, humid temperatures that there were last night and a bit this morning as well. So great to have you with us for game two between these two ball clubs. The Mets already know the Atlanta Braves came away with a win today. So the Mets are three games behind at the moment behind the Atlanta Braves who won behind the pitching of Maddox 4-1 the final today against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Scoreboard watching time for Bobby Valentine's Mets and for Dusty Baker and the Giants as well. Ralph it's that time of year. It is that time of year and the Giants certainly uh, in a great position to win the Western Division of the National League. Their schedule really benefits them. And of course, the Mets are leading in the wild card race. These are the final scores for the day. Philadelphia winning their ball game, and a lot of them in theirs for the one. Cincinnati over Chicago, and St. Louis also defeated Milwaukee. Cincinnati Reds continue to have a bit of a struggle in their chase. Here comes Mike Hampton. He'll make the start tonight looking for his 12th win of the year. An amazing 8-0 mark in his career against the San Francisco Giants. Has never lost a game to him. You got to be good and you got to have a little luck when you can put up those kind of uh, numbers direct. Let's take a look at the starting lineup that we'll see tonight for the Giants brought to you by Dusty Baker and Delta. And there will be some changes in it from last night. Myron Dyer didn't start last night. He'll be in center field tonight. Bill Miller didn't start. He's at third base. Bonds back in in left field. Jeff Kent at second. Ellis Burks in right. Rich Aurelia the shortstop. J.T. Snow at first base. Bobby Estelay is doing the catching and Sean Estes on the mound. And a look at our Tri-State Ford defense here at Chase Stadium tonight behind my captain for the Mets in the outfield, Benny Agbiani, Jay Payton in center, and Derek Bell in right. The infield with a left-hander going for the Giants. Joe McEwing at third, Mike Bordick at short, Edgardo Alfonso, the big home run last night. At second base, Todd Zeal over at first, and Todd Pratt behind the plate. Mike Piazza not playing tonight. Night game tonight, Saturday night. And a day, day, day game tomorrow, what it basically comes down to is Bobby Valentine goes to Mike Piazza and says, which of the two days do you want off? You get one of them off, and he chose to work tomorrow. Mike Campton on the mound for the Mets, 11-7, 3.5 earned run average. This is his 25th start. 158 innings pitched, in which he has given up a fifth, 153 hits and 75 walks. 106 strikeouts. 
And he has given up nine home runs. The consummate competitor. In the lingo of the clubhouse and the dugout, he's known as a foxhole guy. You'd like to have him at your back. He is a real battler and an outstanding athlete. Good offensive player, good hitter, good fielder, runs well. I think his biggest attribute, intensity as a competitor. Mr. Kemp getting ready to go as their leading RBI man will be fourth in the lineup batting cleanup in tonight's game the former Met now having a spectacular year at second base for the San Francisco Giants ready to go in game two for the Giants started the day two games ahead of the Arizona Diamondbacks who won their ball game last night Hampton rocks and fires my takes it we're underway. Bernard did not start against the left-hander last night, Glendon Rush. With three left-handers in a row being thrown against the Giants, Dusty Baker said, I'm going to just juggle the lineup. A lot of it will be gut feel and who I think can hit these guys. Glendon Rush got the victory last night for the Mets. One of the three left-handers they'll throw in this series. Marvin Bernard takes it up high, two and one. Bernard this season 203 Ralph against left handers not yeah. a very good average. I was just going to bring that up and of course uh, the infield does shorten up he likes to bunt a lot. Easy hopper zeal the flip. <laughs> they get Bernard who can cause havoc on the base pass of 15 stolen bases a guy you want off there we talk about Mike Hampton being a good fielder and one of the keys to getting to first base is getting off the mound quickly getting over there and giving your first baseman a good target and getting your body and can control as you get to the bag you do that by getting off the mound quickly Bill Pitcher. Miller at third base pitchers in that situation that do not do that well cover first base and the ball hit to the first baseman get the late break off the mound and then by the time they get over there they have to speed up and got their body out of control Hampton lands a uh, very well balanced to Tom in order to be able to move perfect position that's why he's such a good fielder he's got his chest going right at home plate after he delivers Bill Miller a switch hitter Fouls that one back. Batting 333 right, 254 left. Seven homers on the year. One of the things about Bill Miller, he spells his name the way Don Mueller spelled his name. Mueller, of course, a New York Giant baseball player and one of the outstanding players they had when they were playing in New York. But he pronounces his name Miller, not Mueller. Sure doesn't look like it, does it? M U E L L E R. That's one of those you got to get to know him before you really know how to pronounce his name. And a strike on the inside corner. He was heading the first. Okay. The Giants were complaining about the inside strike that was called against them in last night's ball game. Here again, the pitch on the inside part of the plate called a strike. He was trying to ball a buy ball four there. And that one will be foul outside of third. This says the potential to be just a great pitching matchup. Two of the top 10 ERA men going at it. Hampton is ninth in earned run average. And Sean Estes is 10th. They are both quality dominating pitchers when they are on. And both ground ball pitchers when they're on. 3-2. Either hit it or get hit. Well, by this year, we have seen more and more of those situations where guys foul off balls that if they don't get the bat on it, would probably hit them right in the middle of the chest. Well, the uh, new theory in hitting that they're using more and more, and I don't know, really know why, is the fact that they dive into the ball. And so their bodies are going toward the right field side of the field. And you can't get out, get out of the way. And they are subject to those. Hampton a K. That's why it's really important to be able to pitch inside and uh, 
That was a good case of the answer why. 107 strikeouts now for Mike Hampton on the year. Two down, and it'll bring up Bonds. Makes the pitch inside. Bonds a bit of a struggle now. 0 for 4 last night and 0 for his last eight. Certainly not a struggle on the season. Among the leaders in all kinds of categories. 30 or more home runs nine years in a row now. Hampton a great pitch. Bonds has not had a good year against left-hand pitching. He's sitting 228 against left-hand pitching for an overall average of just under 300. Lost oh, speed that time. You saw that last shot where Joe McEwen is playing way off the bag and way deep at third. I mean, he's out there in short left field territory. Where do you play Barry Bonds playing the pole, obviously. Mets employ that shift every time he's up, and Hampton pitched away from it that time, and it goes two balls, two strikes. And you might, might wonder and say, why doesn't he bunt to get on? But when you bunt the ball, you can't hit the home run, and he is one of the best. If he bunts, he gets fined by the manager. <laughs> I can say, Another good what reason. are you doing to me? 2-2 two -two delivery to Bonds. Sidearmed him a bit, dropped down. Hampton wanted the call, didn't get it. Three and two. There'll be a certain pitch in a sequence that a pitcher wants, and this is the one Mike Hampton wanted. The other pitch on the outside part of the plate was a setup pitch. That may have just missed inside, but that's the pitch that he wanted to get Bonds out on. 3-2 fastball, and he walked him. So Bonds is on, and uh, for Bonds, that'll be his 79th walk that he's received this year. Hampton up there among the leaders in walks, the fourth most among National League pitchers, but much of that came in his first eight starts of the year. Bonds on, one down, or two down rather, no, one away, and Kent coming up, two down. I'll get it. Hang on, first <laughs> inning. Give me a chance. It's Irish night. It's know. Irish night. I started early. A two-strike <laughs> count, runner at first base, two down. Here's the RBI man. That's right, two down. Thank you. Appreciate the help in the truck on that. And Kent that launches that one into left center field, and he's got a base hit. Well, that's an 11 game hit streak now for Kent, who went one for two with a couple of walks last night in the opener and leads it off with his first at bat in the single. All right, here. Number 23, Elvis first. Well, Kent right here shows why he's hitting. 338 before that base hit. He hits the ball right out the fist and loops it over the shortstop's head. And that's when you're having a great year, which he is having. He's really having the MVP year. Four straight season with 100 RBIs. Only Charlie Garinger has done that more times. Charlie did it five straight years for the Tigers back in the 30s. Of every offensive category, he's among the leaders. So here's the chance for Ellis Burks with two down. Hampton got the first two outs, then the walk to Bonds and the single by Kent. Burks had a two for three ball game last night. He has moved in and out of the lineup. Try and keep him as fresh as possible. He's played in 85 games, 270 at bats. Compare that to some of the others who are like Jeff Kent, over 400 at bats. Dusty Baker just moves him in and out of the lineup. Kent doesn't move in and out of the lineup at all. He's playing all the time. Burks is hitting 424 against left hand pitching, and he's hit Hampton well. Three home runs and a 224 average. One ball, one strike count with two on. Burks trying to deliver early in the ball game against Hampton. The 1-1 one, one is fouled back and a one ball two strike count. The old adage of baseball if you're a pitcher is get the first out of the inning. Now Mike Hampton fell behind Bernard. He fell behind Bill Miller. Two and one to Bernard, three and one to Miller. But what happened? He got the first two outs in the inning. And how do you get out of an inning when the other club gets a walk or a couple of base hits and without having them score? You get those outs early. He's one pitch away from it right now. One two delivery. 
And that's going to be caught. Mike Morton. The Giants have the second best average in the league with runners in scoring position. They don't add to it here, though, as Mike Bordick calls it in for out number three. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the New York Mets brought to you by Delta Airlines. Mike Bordick will lead it off. Derek Bell at Garner Alfonso, Todd Zeal batting cleanup, Benny Agbayani, Jay Payton, Todd Pratt doing the catching, Joe McEwing's in a third base to start, and Mike Hampton on the mound. Sean Estes, 27-year-old left-hander. Ready to go. Mike Bordick back up into that leadoff spot in this game. He moves from one day to one day in the lineup, depending on the day and who's pitching and who's playing. Bordick, Hamilton, Agbayani, all in that leadoff spot at different times. And Sean Estes outside, 101. Bordick uh, hit him for the first time against Estes. And successfully, Ralph. Right? Quick look at our Tri-State four defense behind Sean Estes for the Giants. In left field, Bobby Bonds, Marvin Bernard in center, Ellis Burks in right. Around the infield, Bill Miller, Rich Aurelia, Jeff Kent at second base, J.T. Snow at first. And Bobby Estella behind the plate. Now, I will call him Bobby Bonds a lot. It's okay. I played this against his dad, and his dad was a darn good player. And so is he. Not, not bad. Not bad at all. Eric Bell, first ball hitting. Aurelia, Kent, Snow. Well, get used to it. John Estes gets a lot of double plays. You can see right there that there are now two outs. That's on Thank the board. You. Appreciate it. <laughs> what a setup job that was. Every time you hit a ground ball like this with a runner in first base and a complete the double play, there are two outs. Been that way every year. Every year. You know, I'm going to start this game over again. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that tonight is going to be my night for brutal attacks from those I consider partners in this endeavor. 29 double plays grounded into off Sean Estes, the most in the National League. That's two nine. That'd be two is it two outs? You mean nine is a nine. nine. Two nine. 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 Right. Edgardo Alfonso takes the pitch outside for a ball. And the great kid quiz, if he got one more, we would have three. <laughs> An Irish night, too. I expected better. Why should I expect better? Sean Estes takes the pitch away, a two one count. As Alfonso would not chase. Alfonso's really had good uh, luck so far against uh, Estes. Is hit, hitting uh, 526, 10 hits, 19 at bats. It's kind of owning a pitcher, Ralph. It's a short span, but he's had great luck so far. But there is that thing called law of averages. Who do they favor? Is the question. That's the question. When do they turn? <laughs> Two ball, two strike count on Alfonso. Entered the day ninth in the average in the league. We have three of the league's leading hitters in the ballpark Piazza, Kent, and Alfonso. Piazza's got the uh, night off, at least starting wise. Three ball, two strike count. There's Todd Pratt who gets the start tonight. The tank working the game behind the plane for the bats. Broken bat, ground ball. Earlier makes the play, and that'll do it. And there you've seen Sean Estes. In a very short time, Eber Kiner and Thorne. Thanks for being with us, everybody. As the Mets and Giants play this game, too. Lenny Harris on the left and Mike Piazza. One of the bombs last night. He and Edgardo Alfonso hit one almost to the same spot last night to the back of the bleachers. A couple of real shots. Two homers, the four runs. Neil, can you tell Piazza's not in the game today? How can you tell? Yak, 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 yak. yak, yak. <laughs> He doesn't talk very much on game day. He doesn't, does he? I mean, no. That guy, we get a lot of shots of him. He's real quiet. But on days off, he's at it. Couldn't pick a better talking listening partner than Lenny Harris. He says, Lenny, get over here. I got a couple things I want to tell you. So we can take about five innings. Takes the pitch the other way, Richard Rulia does, and delivers a base hit. 
So Aurelius on after going 0 for 4 last night with a leadoff single here in the second inning, second hit for the Giants. That was one of those little poke shots, just barely got enough of it to get it out into right field, and he'll take it. That'll bring up J.T. Snow. Left-handed hitter against the left-handed pitcher. Used to be a switch hitter. Gave it up. Tough as that. To change and not be a switch hitter anymore and now look at lefties from the left side. There's only one thing that makes you do that. It's because you can't hit right-handed. <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> Looking at that number on the left there and seeing a couple of real low numbers in the first two spots. That's right. It'll put you over on the other side. Hit 231 off left-handers last year. He's hitting 284 off him this year. It worked. Two strike count on J.T. Snow. 0 for 3 in the opener last night. There are those differentials between lefties and righties. Off the end of the bat, Hampton went away from him. 0 and 2 still. We talked about Hampton being 11 and 7 this season. Looking for victory number 12. And when you look at, well, he had a great year last year 22 and 4, 18 games over 500. Put in perspective, he lost his first three decisions the game in Tokyo. Since then, he's been 11 and 4. Gets away, hit him. Snow is hit by a pitch and Hampton in a bit of a problem here in the second inning as the first two Giants are on. As Gary talked about before, if there's one Achilles heel for Mike Hampton. Now, he does not give in to anybody. He's very aggressive. He makes you come after him and beat him. Gary's talking about the number of base on balls that he has. Now, last year, Mike Hampton, look at this ball that just nicked Snow on that right elbow. Hampton has walked 75 men this year. He walked over 100 last year. He will put some men on base, but he will not give in to the hitter. Bobby Estalea. Nobody out. Bobby's uh, grandfather was a player in the major leagues, Roberto Estaleo. Played for the Washington Senators and other clubs in the major league. Is he a catcher, too? He was a... Third baseman and outfield. As Delea shares the duties behind the plate almost equally with Doug Maravelli, who caught last night, and that almost hit him. Boy, that looked like it nicked his shirt. May have been his body genuflecting to get his chest out of the way, but it looked like it nicked him right underneath the shirt. Puts up big numbers against the Mets this season three for seven and six RBIs, including a grand slam. Consistent with his career average 381 and five homers against the rest of the league. It's 226, 381 against New York. Estelea out in front of that one, one and two. One of the bread and butter pitches for Mike Hampton. When you got a right hand hitter with power sitting on fastball, he'll pull the string. Lay that ball right on the outside corner. The hitter reads fastball, and then the ball just dies away. Got good movement on it, change of speed, and you saw that swing is way out in front of it. One ball, two strike count. Richard really off second, Snow off first, and a ground to the third, not hard. Joe McEwing right on the bag. One, and turns two. This ball club, you just get very used to seeing good defense played by the Mets. Here, an excellent play by McEwing keeps a foot on the flag on the bag, full composure, and an easy play to get SAL at, at first base. Get tagged the bag and feel the ball, almost like it's infield practice. And I think it looks so up. easy. That's good play. Good pick by Zeal at first base to help out. Robin Ventura getting the night off tonight against the left hander and McEwing playing at third. McEwing added to that long roster of Mets third baseman earlier this year when he got a chance to play there. McEwing number 119 players in Mets uniforms who've 
plate at third base. Sean Estes, the opposing pitcher, takes it down low, 101. And who is number one? Don Zimmer. Why did it take so long to find a third baseman over the? <laughs> They're still looking. <laughs> That's a lot of folks to be playing there since 62. They found one there in Robin Ventura, a gold glove no less. Estes, slow roller, will go foul. Two pretty good hitting pitchers in this game. John Estes, 239 hitter. He's had 11 hits, including four doubles, a home run, and 10 RBIs. Then you got Mike Hampton, who's a 309 hitter. So both of these guys not only throw the ball well, they can hit the ball. Montreal and the sixth giant pitcher ever. Two down. Runner at second base. That's JT Snow. Two two count. Top of the order. Bernard waiting on deck. Giants have struggled a bit against left handers. They're 12 and 14 against the lefties. Folks up on the Subway station platform launching the ball game here at Shea. 2 2 delivery. Broken bat to short. Bordix there. I can go right. I can go left. Mike Bordick. Runner left on. One hit. The week will continue tomorrow, Sunday, with Jewish Heritage Day. There'll be kosher food stands throughout the stadium. Singer Yol Sharabi will perform pregame wise. And for tickets, you can call 718 507 TIXX or get them on the web at Mets.com. That's Jewish Heritage Day tomorrow here at Shea. Some 50,000 expected here tonight on Irish Night, part of International Week. It was a big advance sale. The weather may hold down a bit on the walk-ups, but a big crowd tonight at Shea Stadium for this game against a team that always draws well in New York with a great history of the Giants, of course, here in this city as well. <laughs> and some innovative signs as well. No score as we go to the bottom half of the second inning. Zia Lagbayani and Peyton do up. Mets have won their last seven games at home. They are now 38 and 18 here at Shea Stadium this year. John Estes and outside for a ball. Only the Giants and Arizona who have 39 home wins have more home wins than the Mets. And the Giants started out by losing their first six games in their new ballpark. They're loving it now, aren't they? You know, they really found out how to play in that ballpark because it has strange dimensions, and they really did found out that the wind blows in from left, you play the outfield a different way than you normally play it, and they've learned in the hurry, and they figure that it will take another year for the opposition to really figure that out. The other way by Zeal, deep towards the wall, back and up, and what a catch, Ellis Burks! Robbing Zeal, probably of a home run. Speaking of learning how to play ballparks, this isn't Burke's yard, Ralph, but he got this one. It's really a great play, and the ball looks like it's going to be out of the ballpark, but Burks goes back to the wall and takes a home run away as he goes high above the fence to make the catch as he crashes into the fence. That patting on the fence does help. Great play by Ellis Burks. Veteran outfielder hauls one in at the 358 mark. Just kept it out of the garden in the bullpen. And a strike taken by Benny Agbayani. He got a couple of right right fielders in this ball game, almost clones. 
far as being veteran outfielders, very intense players, good defensive outfielders. That's the kind of play that Brooks just made. You'd expect that uh, Derek Bell would make exactly the same kind of play because you've seen him do it all year long. Guys that have been around and taken pride in their defensive outfield as well as their offense. They are two veterans, 35-year-old Ellis Burks and Derek Bell of the Mets. Agbayani, center field in the 0-2. Marvin Bernard. You come to the ballpark and you look at numbers of the ball club that you're going to play, and you think it's Sean Estes. Well, what does he have? And one of the things you do, you look at the number of home runs that he's given up. He has only given up six home runs this year. And this is his 21st start. Well, when you see that number, you say, all right, he's hitting the bottom half of the bat. How's he hitting the bottom half of the bat? Well, he's got sinkers and a good changeup. He used to be the kind of pitcher to like that throw seam fastball up at the top of the strike zone. He used to give up more home runs. He's really become a pitcher to make the hitters hit his pitch and not be so worried about the strikeouts and blowing the ball by somebody. And as you can see, again, two outs in the inning. But now with a little few raindrops in front of him. See what happens? You guys were unkind to an Irishman here? <laughs> now. And the good Lord. Retaliation. Huh? See? Retaliation. You call on the maker what when would, you do those things. What would it be an Irishman? And there you an Irishman soft, yourself. It'd be in a soft sprinkle if I were to sit in there a lot. <laughs> one ball, one strike count on Jay Payton. And yes, there are two down. John Estes down low to him. Two and one. Estes spent six years in the minor leagues with eight different teams. And you say, what happened? And all of a sudden, he found how, how to pitch and won 19 ball games for the Giants. Now, he was offered a full scholarship to Stanford. And turned that down, you say, well, maybe he wasn't that smart. But he is a smart guy. The four point student in high school. High school student, 4.0. And when he, after he had the great year when he won 19 games, he wanted to go after the season to Italy. So he learned how to speak Italian. 3 2 count. That isn't always that easy. He uh, he does have some smarts about him. He's really a pretty good pitcher. Maybe better than that. What have you got to check with Slovakia? He would have learned how to speak. Check to the block in Italian. Would have done him any good. <laughs> First walk given up by Sean Estes. Comes with two down, and Jay Payton gets it here in the second inning. Now Todd Pratt will come up against the left-hander. Estes has had shoulder problems. In fact, he had shoulder problems at the start of this year and had to regroup from that. He had a shoulder injury back in 98 that limited his availability that season. Estes has had, talk about up and down years, Ralph talking about that 19 and 5 year. That was in 97. The next year, 7 and 12. And then last year, 500 ball, 11 and 11. Now back with that 11 3 mark and an ERA is dropped down by more than a run per game from last year. Pratt takes a strike outside 101. I was talking to Dave Rigetti before the game about Estes. You know what Dave what's the difference with him now and I suppose the last year is just not trying to embarrass everybody. He wants to say one time he had a great curveball. I mean he had that left handed yellow hammer off the table kind of curveball. Right back to it. And Pratt he is retired. That'll do it. No runs no hits. And a base runner left on. We've completed two with the rain coming down here at Shea. Giants and Mets no score. Oh my gosh. Even Bobblehead Doll Man, sometimes known as Tom Seaver, had to be covered up here. Wait, who's writing on there? Who did that? Oh, yeah. That is, that is Tom Seaver right there. Number 41. Look at that, huh? The resemblance is what. I'm not. No, come on. They're covering the field here. It's Irish <laughs> sure. night. Sure. We don't need the bubble hit dog. Well, the two outs thing didn't bother you when it was coming this way, though, did it, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you see, we have a rain delay. And uh, while those two get married, doesn't it look like a wedding gown? 
I'm getting a little worried. There aren't any outs. We'll come back, try and get them. We'll be here. Cheers. For money on Mike. The Mets take on Barry Bonds and the Giants tomorrow at 1 on the WB 11. 747, the rain delay started, and now they've taken the tarp off, and the drying agents are going down on the field and hopefully be able to get this second game of the four game series started up again pretty soon. Welcome back, everybody. Gary Thorne along with Tom Seaver and Ralph Kiner. Back here in this ball game already, we've seen some outstanding defensive plays. These two ball clubs rank among the best in the National League, Tom. In fact, the Giants are third in fielding percentage in the league. The Mets come into tonight sixth, but the Mets defense has solidified itself along the way and actually gotten better. Well, they've had such a spectacular year last year defensively. One of the things you see what's happened in this game here tonight. Now, these are not great plays, but they're real good plays. And they are plays that teams could make mistakes on. But it's one of the things the New York Mets do not do is make mistakes on these kind of plays. They get these kind of outs and don't turn them into mistakes and keep the inning going for the opposition. They've got trying agent on the base pass and on the mound. New York Mets, Chicago Cubs, and San Francisco Giants have been the three hottest teams in the National League since the All-Star break. If you go all around at baseball, these are the best records overall on the season. And the Atlanta Braves, who've learned how to win early, that includes their win today, are on top in the majors with the best record in the game. And the Mets, the Mets have stranded just one, and that was the Peyton walk in the second inning. Figures to be a classic pitching duel here tonight, and uh, both starters, with the rain delay not being that long, will be able to come back and get that out there again. We're talking about the great catch, Ralph, made by Ellis Burks that uh, kept the run out of the game. Well, this ball is out of the ballpark. The wind is blowing in and holding the ball up, and Burke's able to go back there and crash against the fence and hold onto the ball. Wonderful play there, and that kept the game scoreless as Zeal was robbed of a home run. Ralph, I was asking you before uh, we were talking, one of the things that surprises me that's happened in the game, Major League Baseball after the All-Star break, the offensive numbers are going down. I thought with the bullpens being overused the way they were in the first half, that the home runs hits averages would take off in the second half. They're all going the other way. Well, you know, you get so many opinions in baseball, and of course that makes the game so debatable and hard to analyze. There really isn't any reason for the uh, production to be down this early in the season. I can see where if you're in the end of the season in September when the pitching is uh, usually spread out more because they bring up the rosters from 25 to 40 players uh, that uh, it would be a little more difficult. And of course the shadows make a big difference in September. It's a little hard to see the ball, but I have no idea why they would be done right after the All-Star break up to now, which is about a month later. Yeah, I don't either. I, I've been really surprised at that, and they were talking about average numbers for both the American and National League. And I thought most surprisingly is that the home run rates, home runs per game in both leagues, is off almost a home run a game. That is a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot, yeah. See Mr. Burks in there. Of course, one thing about that, McGuire hasn't been playing. That makes that may be <laughs> it right there. The bat boy who will only handle a bat for his dad. He only puts a helmet on and goes out and changes the bats, picks them up when his dad's at the plate. He is a cutie. I had him down there before the game. Robbie Thompson, who used to play for the Giants, one of the coaches, brought him out a bag of seeds, sunflower seeds. And I was sitting next to him. I said, uh, you like the barbecue? Yep. You eat those all the time? Yep. Can you spit them out? Watch. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it all. And he fired it. I mean, he had, looked like a machine gun going with the shells of the seeds before the game down on the bench. He's a five-tool player. He's a five-tool player. And don't get in his bubble gum either. He's got a little <laughs> case of gum down there nobody touches. All right, we are ready to go. There you see, right? See, he's going for the gum now. That hat fits well, too. 39-minute rain delay. And uh, Mr. Burke's ready to play. So are we. Hampton against Marvin Bernard. And we're underway with a strike on the outside corner. Third inning, top of it. Nobody had come to the plate. 
in this inning for the Giants before the rains came. Bernard grounded out his first time up. 0 for 3 in the series. Bounced away by Hampton. So Tom Seaver, how difficult is this for the starters? One thing you do, you go in the dugout in the clubhouse, you put a new shirt on, dry off, get dry stuff on your arm. And it goes longer than, well, whatever, everybody, individual got to judge how long that might be. You can go out in the runway, play a little catch, change your shirt again, keep the blood flow in your shoulder, in your legs, etc. 45 minutes, hour might be the cutoff, but depends on the individual. But there are things you can do to keep yourself ready for when you go right back out there. A lot of pitchers go in there and rain day sit and don't do anything. Right off the mound and into center field. Byron Bernard's got a leadoff single there in the third inning. Of course, one of the problems, Tom, uh, with you modern day ball players, when we had a rain delay in the summertime, there was no air conditioning. You, you never did good cool down. You really stayed warm because the clubhouses had absolutely no air conditioning. They were hot. Did you have electricity? Had, see, uh, some of us had candles. <laughs> but uh, later on, some of the richer clubs had uh, light bulbs and that sort of thing. <laughs> Fans that you yeah. can turn on? Air conditioning. Ralph makes a good point. Air conditioning is you got to stay out of it. If you're pitching and you want to get back in there, you got to stay out of the air conditioning. Get that and get that. The biggest thing is change. Get all the stuff, any clothing on you that's got any moisture, perspiration in it. Just get it off, put dry stuff on. Take that old wet stuff and throw it in the dryer and put it on later. You may stink in the last few innings of the game. You get that far, but you've got to get it dry. You're talking about the actual aromic smell, not the pitching performance. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. You'd rather, you know. Physical. That's right. You'd rather the physical order rather than the physical <laughs> order of pitching poorly. If, you, if a pitcher has his choice, believe me, he'll take the. Uh, yeah, you know, the heck with your teammates. Let them worry about it in their air-conditioned cars. Bill Miller with a 2-0 count on him. Showed bunt that time. Not here. Behind first seal, Alfonso's got a better angle. And Bill Miller's retired. He did not get Marvin Bernard moved up from first base. Gets a few boos. Well, you look back on uh, certain plays in the ball game being a very important part of the game, right there. Miller was up and was really going to sacrifice the runner to second for Bonds and Kent, the two big hitters on the ball club, two of the biggest hitters on the ball club, and then hit away in the 2 0 count and failed to advance the runner. Bonds with a cut here. Drew will walk his first time up, one down, runner at first base. Ever dangerous when he gets his chance at the plate. Eight for 30, two home runs, lifetime off Hampton. Check swing, runner goes. Pratt, right there, gotcha. by Todd Pratt. Neither one of these two clubs have much team speed. They're down as far as stolen bases in the National League. And when you put Todd Pratt in there, you get a catcher that can throw right on the money. Very strong throwing arm. I'm not surprised that the Giants didn't hit and run to Bill Miller after that. Get the butt down. And you may not want to steal, but there's other ways to get the running game going. Explain that to me. I know. How do you? I don't. I, I don't understand how you run with with bonds at the plate. Bonds at the plate yeah. in a scoreless game. Yeah. Well, unless you say, all right, it's a left-handed pitcher. Let's get it in the scoring position. Yeah, okay. but you have two guys. You got Bonds and Kent. I agree. Three and two. And especially with a guy like Pratt that can throw. Forty-four percent effective in throwing out base runners. Todd Pratt. That's a very high number. That wasn't even close at second base on Marvin Bernard. 3 2 delivery to Bonds. And a chopper to second base. Alfonso. No runs, one hit. Todd Pratt with a big hand for Hampton in that inning. Here's our Toyota out of town scoreboard. Atlanta won today. Mets now trailed them by three. Cincinnati losing their ball game. St. Louis won there, so they gained another game on the Reds. Five and a half now for the Cardinals in that lead, and other games going on tonight. 
So Atlanta's got a three game lead over the Mets the Cardinals in the central of five and a half over Cincinnati eight and a half over the Cubs the Giants lead Arizona by two and the Dodgers by six in the West. Sean Estes. Eleven and three. Goes to work here against McEwing who'll get his first at bat and Hampton and boarding. And a strike on the outside corner. Estes five and two lifetime against the Mets including a victory in that series on the West Coast where he went seven innings gave up three runs five hits and a 10 three win. Tom and I were talking about this on the way to the ballpark today about Sean Estes. The run support he gets he could be a 30 game winner. He leads the majors gets six point six runs per start. Nobody gets more. In the games that he's won great. 11 games he's got nine plus runs per game. Nine plus per game. Rich Aurelia. He's had two games in which the Giants have scored 18 runs. He won both of those. Good. And he had one game where they scored 12, and he won that one. He won both those 18 run those games. Eight. Huh? He hung in there, Pretty baby. Good. <laughs> little help from the pen. And one of them was a shutout. Really? 18 to nothing. He has not lost a game now in his last 10 starts. Six wins and four no decisions. Mike Hampton. Well, the Giants really have the best of the schedule as far as they're concerned in their division. They have this four game series with the Mets, and then they go home for a three game series with Atlanta. That's seven games there. And then they close the season with 11 games versus their division rivals. That's 18 games. And then they have 33 against the nine division contenders. So they have a real good schedule. One ball one strike count on Mike Hampton. I told you both of these pitchers outstanding hitters none better than Hampton. 17 hits all singles eight RBIs and a 309 batting average. Esther stays away from him two balls two strikes. Mike is tied with runs scored for pitchers third in batting average at 315. He's helped himself out in some of his starts with RBIs. He's gone there. And the pitcher turns around to argue he might want to be careful about that. WB11 <laughs> is proud to introduce Air 11 watching the sky to give you the latest in news and traffic. Find Air 11 on the WB11 morning news weekday mornings 6 to 8 right here on the WB11. Got to be careful Gary you're exactly right on those strike three those called strike threes by the umpire turn around looking at him you, you, you're only one out there's nine guys in that other dugout that you want to get out. I think he had some wet shoes so he's changing shoes Tom he heard you driven deep by Mike Borden left field looking goodbye Mike Borden a home run. with his 19th home run of the season split between Baltimore and the Mets and he has the only two hits off of Estes and the Mets lead one nothing three home runs now is the New York Met for Mike Bordick his fifth Met RBI and there aren't many home runs given up by Sean Estes only seven on the year and that was number seven. Came with two down here in the third inning for boarding. 
Estes has given up all seven homers to right handers none to left handers. And the Mets jump out on top on just their second hit. Outside to Bell two ball one strike count he hit into a double play his first time up. That sends the big crowd to their feet. Strike taken two and two to Bell. Bell trying to accomplish the amazing feat of going from 314 two years ago to 236 last year to a 300 year again. And he may do it. He's hitting 293 right now. Largest drop off of any major league player in average from last year to the year before. Now he may have the greatest increase of any player from last year to this year. 3 2. He's got a base hit in front of Bonds. That is two pitches that Sean Estes has gotten up in the strike zone. The pitch to Bordick was just about, oh, mid thigh high, maybe about belt high, and that was up and in. It may have broken his bat. Looked like he got it above the waist. Yep, right around waist and hit it up about the label. And Strong enough to push it off into left field. Look at those arms collapse. That's a situation where a pitcher gets done what he wants to do. He made that hitter collapse his arms. Made him give in to the pitch. Strong enough to be able to fight it off and get a single. Edgardo Alfonso. That's now with three hits in the game, two in the inning. Alfonso grounded out his first time up. And there for a strike. Estes has a, a huge differential between Pac Bell Park and on the road this year. He's seven and one at home and four and two on the road, but it's the ERA. 1.8 at home, 5.82 on the road. Right field. Burks has got it. So the Mets hope to add to his road woes. Mike Bordick has done that here in this inning. A run on a couple of hits. The blow coming by Bordick. His 19th home run of the year. Putting the Mets on top. One to another. Tampa Bay. Another game's going on. Central Chicago continues to lead Cleveland by eight and a half. Seattle with a loss today. Oakland gains a game. They are six behind Seattle. Oakland ended a six game losing streak today. Jeff Kent will lead it off. It'll be Kent Burks and Aurelia do up. Giants who had their four game win streak ended with a Mets win last night four to one. And Kent will foul that one off. He's single. Ten game, eleven game hit streak now for Kent. Him with a chance to be the MVP in the National League, a good chance. Not many second basemen get into that category. Down the line towards the corner, fair ball, Bell over to get it, and on his way to second base with yet another hit. Kent with a two for two ball game, his 36th double, third in the league and two baggers, among all those other numbers, Ralph. Well, I'm sure you Met fans remember Jeff Kent coming to the Mets from Toronto and really not doing a whole lot, known more for intensity than performance. But now he has put it all together. Four consecutive years of 100 runs better than only Charlie Geringer of Detroit has done more. He had five years. Kent with the Mets hit 270, 292, 278, and 290 in 96 when he was traded, went over to Cleveland. Most home runs he ever had, 21 for the Mets, and then 31 two years ago with the Giants. His career highs in homers. Kent's on his way to career year in all numbers. Ellis Burks, they'll hold the runner. Bordick makes the play. Didn't get him. That'll be an error on Mike Bordick. 
Well, Bordy handled the bad, bad hop at second at shortstop. Right, the ball comes up. Now he throws high. Gio unable to get the call from the first base umpire. That's good hustle by Alice Burks down the line. Just a bad throw from Mike Bordick. We were just talking a few minutes ago about how the Mets defensively seem to make all the plays. And that one an easy play for Bordick and a big break. The Giants made a mistake there. Burks didn't get the ball to the right side. And Ken had to stay at second. And Bordick just returned the favor. That was an easy play for him. Boy, that is, and they make that kind of play, a real simple play, and turn it into an error. It's a real surprise. Big break for the Giants. Third error by Bordick with the Mets. Now the Mets looking for the bunt. Rich Aurelia, the shortstop with single, will step out. For Aurelia this year, three sacrifice bunts. Ewing's in at third. Zeal in front of the bag and on the grass at first. Kent, the lead runner, stayed at second. Burks at first on the error. Not showing bunt. Ball one away to Aurelia. I'd really be surprised if they sacrifice here. There might be a reason for it with the advent of uh, possibly more rain and a shortened game. But right here, they're bunting with the seventh, eighth, and ninth batters behind the current batter at the plate. And the Giants are trading by one run. Not bunting, not only that, he's got a. No, he doesn't. Foul ball. Real close down the line at third. Really, a broke his bat on that one. Now you wonder if the rain delay has bothered Mike Hampton. He got the double down the right field line by Jeff Kent. Then there's supposedly a double play ball. And that pitch a mistake. That's the one that makes you wonder. Just on the outside of that line, barely outside that line. But that last pitch. Right there to Aurelia was he did not uh, uh, Mike Hampton did not get that ball in there where he wanted it to. Left that ball up and out over the plate. And Mike Hampton doesn't make him he does not make a living up out over the plate. He's got to get the ball in to be effective if he goes up in the strike zone or he's got to go up above the top of the strike zone one of the two. One ball one strike count nobody out. Aurelia with a new bat. Kent back to second and Burks to first. Mets still think he might bunt. McEwing even with a bag at third. Way inside and a good play by Pratt to prevent a wild pitch. I kind of got to agree with Ralph. I don't think they'd be bunting here either unless, unless Dusty Baker got a hold of the forecast and if there is more rain in the area and it, when it is ex expected here. This is a ball club, the Giants, that they don't have team speed. Uh, they're second in the National League in runs scored. I mean, they can't put points on the board. And if you're that high in the league in runs scored, you've got to be able to do it all the way through the top to bottom of your lineup. Two ball, two strike count on Aurelia. Hanging tough here against Mike Hampton. Hampton has eight wild pitches, so he'll bury a couple once in a while. Todd Pratt, Mike Piazza. Have to do some blocking of pitches when Hampton's on. And Pratt made a good stop on that last one to keep the double play in order. <laughs> two two count on Aurelia. Jammed him again. McEwing only plays at first. Same effect as the bunt, but the runners moved up, one away. Not what he wanted, though. Well, he got the minimum of what he wanted. He wanted to hit that ball back over McEwing's head, trying to get a double down that left field line, but a good pitch that cutter on the inside part of the plate. That one got in there. That one got all the way in there. Right up above the trademark and an easy ground ball to McEwing made the smart play going to get the one out at first base. Now here's a man that uh, 
Hampton wants to get and really has to get right here. Left hand batter against the left hand pitcher. JT Snow inside for a ball. You're exactly right, Ralph. You know, and it's a selection of pitches. There are some pitches that a pitcher will use where you want the hitter to hit the ball. There are other pitches that you use when you want the hitter to swing and miss, if you can accomplish that. There are certain outs in the inning that you want to have the hitter put the ball in play, and other ones that got to come by strikeout, and this is one of them right here. Hitting. No chance to get out of the way of that thing. Second batter hit tonight by Hampton. So he's two for two against Snow. Take a look at it again. No escape from this one. That's where you throw when you want to really hit somebody. When you're getting revenge, you throw behind them because the body reaction is to move back into the ball. That's where you throw when you want to hit somebody. He did not want to hit him in that situation. No, that's that, the wrong time to hit him. Oh, it right just now. a huge mistake right there. All you had to do is read the reaction from Mike Hampton. You knew it was a mistake. Bobby Estelle has already had one grand slam against the Mets. Now it is fouled off for a strike. He put one out in the series. Played in San Francisco. And Estelle has got the bases loaded here and one down with the Mets leading at one nothing. So a big moment here in this ball game for Hampton. Hampton's given up only nine home runs on the year, six to right-handers. Estelea hit into a double play his first time up and a timeout taken at the plate. Estelea with a grand slam home run against Rush. For that grand slam he hit against the Mets this year. Two strike count on him now. Bobby Estelea. Amazing how Dusty Baker's divided the time up between these two catchers. Almost 50 50 this year for Doug Marabelli and Estelea. 0 2 bases full. Missed down low. What's happened is the catchers have their own pitchers. Estelle has caught 90% of the innings of Yvonne Her uh, Hernandez and Sean Estes. Maribel has caught 94% of Kirk Reeder and Mark Gardner. Russ Ortiz, the other starters, divided almost evenly between the two catchers. So they've had almost identical innings. One, two, and he just got enough to foul it off. Well, you can see Mike Captain coming off the mound. He thought it might have been a pass ball. He didn't see the foul tip by Estelea. Heads up, real heads up pitcher, Mike Hampton. He's not going to wait. Say, well, I didn't see the umpire's call. The umpire, yeah, there it is. As soon as those hands go up, meaning foul ball. If those hands don't, until those hands go up, that ball's in play. One, two, the count on Estelea. Just somehow got a foul ball out of that. It's hard to hit a ball that far inside, outside of first. And hit it sharply, too. You better get those hands way out front if you're going to do that. And didn't break his bat. That's a turn one double play. They're looking for another right here. One two delivery again. Has to lay a fly ball left field but in the yard. Agbayani will make the catch. Kent will tag. He scores and Agbayani oh, got no. there three outs. Two runs will score. Burks is in. Agbayani gave the ball to the fan. He thought there were three outs. He thought there were three outs. He handed the ball over to a fan. Two other runs have scored. Unbelievable. Well, it happened a few years ago against Larry Walker 
who handed the ball to a fan in the stand and one scored from third base as he tried to get the ball back, back as Benny tried to do here. But a total miscalculation by Agbiani. He thinks there are three men out with a catch and goes to the stands and gives the ball away. And another run scores that would not have even moved to third base if we had known the count. You see the fans down there put their fingers up two down. Watch this. He hands the ball, starts off a fan a couple of seats away, goes two down, two down. Look at the poor kid. What? What? <laughs> Look at the eyes on that child. Oh my gosh. Now Snow has moved all the way over to third base. And here is Sean Estes. Now you've seen one of those one in a million right there. I don't think I've ever seen that. I've never I seen it. I can't believe it. I mean, it can, anything can happen. Wow. It's a 2-1 game. Giants lead, swung on and missed by Estes. It is called a sacrifice fly in an RBI for Estelea. And then this poor kid who had been picked out. Look at the look at the man sitting next to the kid. What are you doing? Oh. oh my gosh. A sacrifice and an error. This kid will be on the news tonight. Forever. This play will be on the news for a long, long time. Holy mackerel. He'll get another ball. Hope, John hope, Estes one Hopefully not from Benny. No. Swung on and missed. Mike Hampton. Gets the strikeout, but an amazing embarrassment for Benny Agbayani. The Giants have a two to one lead, one earned, one honor. Toyota line score, and both of those runs end up being unearned in that fourth inning. Two, four, and oh for the Giants. One, three, and two. And you have seen a moment that you may never see again in baseball unless you see this one repeated. I mean, this just doesn't happen. But Benny Agbayani believing that there were in fact two outs when he caught the ball there weren't handing the ball over the fans hollering at him there are only two down goes back to get the baseball. Well that's one of those mistakes that you're going to live with the rest of your life. A couple of guys with pats on the back for him but kind of a quiet entrance. Man. Everybody's been there. Everybody's made those stupid mistakes. That's why they call us human beings. Here we are. Thought I was the only one who oh, didn't know how many else there were tonight. <laughs> you know, there's the poor guy's got to go in there and it obviously gets booed here for making a mental mistake. But he did get pats on the back from some of the people. And some people don't, you know, they don't. You don't know if his emotions are such. You just leave him alone, too. That's not, a, you know, they don't go up to somebody in that situation. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Just not leave, okay. No, it's not okay. Just yeah. leave him alone. No. Hang with him. It's all right. Everybody makes mistakes. Zeal robbed of a home run his first time up by the right fielder, Ellis Burks, who hauled one in on it. One of the people who did pat him on the back was Mike Hampton. That's important. Darn right. Right there. Enough said. 2-2 delivery. John Estes outside. So a 2-1 lead for the Giants on two unearned runs with two errors committed by the Mets in the fourth inning. Well, the one thing about that, words will not help you at all. And the only thing you say is, we've all done it. Now forget it. Lord Short, Rich Aurelia. Listen to the reaction. Well, here's Benny coming in, thinking there's three men out, and the inning is over. And he hands the ball to that fan. Now, there's a fan there with two fingers up, meaning there are only two men out. He reaches back, gets the ball, but it's too late. Happened to Larry Walker against the Dodgers in Dodgers Stadium about four years ago. trying to make Benny feel better. Pretty nice hand and now the Benny chant. Hey. 
much does he want to hit one right here? Ooh. How much does he want to get it over with? Get out of the spotlight. Yes, this is pitch on the inside corner. Two strike count on Ag You know, as Ralph says, I mean, everybody makes a mistake. I mean, that, that's just a mental mistake. Here's a player, young player, and he has never, I, in, in, at any time in the field, done anything where you could say he's not hustling or given 100%. Never. There's a kid that has worked his rear end off to get to the big leagues and continue to work to stay in the big leagues. He has only one chance to get out of this without it haunting him the rest of his life, and that is if the Mets won the game. And it'll go away. Then it becomes a lap mm -hmm. for the future. And they'll say in the clubhouse, yeah, you're trying to keep him close, Benny. <laughs> then it becomes the a players joke, will forget uh, it. And if they do lose, the players will forget it. Players will forget it. It'll be tomorrow if it's a brand new ball game and it's gone. But um, it's the replays and TV and highlight films. It'll he's be made, there. He's made the forever yeah. highlight. Yeah. But Ross' point is, if they win, it's from the negative standpoint, it's gone. Two down. Here's Jay Payton. Big cut on a heater. Payton drill walked. The only one given up by Sean Estes so far. We've had the battle on the mound anticipated so far in this game. Hayden continues to be up among the leaders in all those rookie categories offensively. He's going to get consideration in that rookie of the year balloting. Leads all rookies in average. Hits, total bases, bound base percentage, slugging percentage. Be some interesting awards this year too. Yeah, they will. MVP, Rookie of the Year, Cy Young. Jam shot back, 0 and 2. There's no dead giveaways in any one of them. A lot of guys still in there. Earlier in the year, you would have thought that Edgardo Alfonso would be there, and he still may be there at the end. But I think that when he went through that period when he was injured and hurt, and his power fell off, what he hasn't had a home run since June, first part of June, before last night. Nice running play, but off the mark by Bill Miller. Peyton with that speed, forcing the errant throw. I think he would have eaten the ball out anyway with a good throw. We'll see how it's scored. It's going to be scored a base hit right here. It gets down the line in a real hurry. And it is scored as a base hit. So Peyton extends his hit streak to four games as he's had a walk at a single and the Mets get their fourth hit of the ball game and Todd Pratt up with two down Pratt grounded out his first time up 248 on the year for Pratt with seven homers pitch taken outside for a ball Two one ball game with the Giants on top second of four Levon Hernandez and L. Leiter tomorrow afternoon right here on the WB 11 at 1 o'clock. Russ Ortiz and Rick Reed. Fox Sports New York on Monday night and Colorado to town. Don't forget a double header starting at 510 on Tuesday against Colorado. 2 0 delivered to Pratt straight back. You know getting back to the play by Agbayani. He evidently just miscalculated and thought that the ball hit the Bordic was an out. And it would have been an out except that Bordic meant, Bordic meant a bad throw to first for an error. In your own mind in the outfield you just sort of say well that was an out. But it wasn't. And that is about as good a definition of how you can get a brain cramp in a game as I've ever heard, Ralph. That's just what happened. That's what happened. You saw yeah. something, you put it in your mind as an out. Well, that's an out. And that's where it stayed. And the pitch is taken down low, three and one. Three ball, one strike count, two down. Todd Pratt. Mel Stottlemyre is out there listening to the ball game tonight again. We know Mel, our best wishes to you. Now going through chemotherapy now and still trying to get back to the ballpark as often as he can. And our thoughts and prayers are with you. Thanks. 
Bush inside corner strike and Pratt come back here. Now look at Todd Pratt. Not a word too. Not a word. He's got to catch my captain. Where's this pitch? Boy borderline at best. But he wanted to say something right there. Well, the and if he is, said anything, he didn't say it. You know, he didn't say it blatantly. He's making his point, and not looking directly at the umpire, and say, "We want it too. We want that pitch as well." Good news, it wasn't a strikeout. Now the runner would be going with a pitch, and he can score from first in a double. And uh, Bobby Estaleo wants to talk to Estes before they throw here. And Todd Pratt right over. <laughs> To Mark Wagner behind home plate too. There's another meeting that went on there for about 10 seconds. Everybody's looking at the mound because of the pitcher and the catcher. Pretty good politician, Todd Pratt. I think Get your words in and don't hurt anybody. Don't hurt your own pitcher. And the catcher goes to the mound. Yeah, he goes over and has a final word about that 3-1 pitch. And Wagner looked like he was laughing. Yeah, might have been. 3-2 delivery. That's down low. Second walk given up by Sean Estes. So Pratt gets the walk after all. That kind of fits there. Three and two, not even close to the strike zone. You got the feeling Sean Estes didn't want to pitch at all to Todd Pratt. They got Joe McEwing. Certainly not as much power as Todd Pratt to the plate. Estes with a one run lead. That three two pitch, not even close. Joe McEwing will get the chance first and second two down. Starting at third tonight his fifth start at third base. Bobby Valentine coming over to see Benny Agbayani. Two down. I give Bobby Valentine a lot of credit on that. He waited until he believed things had kind of settled down. The attention was off him. Hoped he wouldn't probably get on camera. And he's talking to him right now. You see Benny shaking his head, but Bobby's doing it nonchalantly. When Benny went the dugout, went by Bobby Valentine. Bobby didn't pat him on the rear end, didn't pat him on the back. Just let him go. Let him cool off a little bit. Hey, Bobby Valentine has been at Benny Agbayani's corner since day one, since they were at Triple A together. Made his point and just moved away. Two down, one strike count. McEwen towards the middle, but really is there. And that will be the third out. No runs, a base hit. Mets leave two. They stranded four. Four have also been left on by the Giants. Manhattan. Tom Seaver, Ralph Kiner. Yours truly, Gary Thorne. Benny Agbayani back out there. As Tom said, just wants it to go. Mets needing a win to remain two and a half games behind the Atlanta Braves who won their ball game today. And here's what they watch this after they warmed up in the outfield Benny sent the ball to the ball boy who took it over to the young man and gave it to him. Nice move. It was nice. Two four and oh for the Giants one four and two for the Mets both runs by the Giants on earn. Top of the order Marvin Bernard. Who's had a single one for two in the ball game? Now answer this, Gary. Uh, does that boy that got the ball does he get an assist on that play? Yeah, I think he gets an assist on the air. He also got a big surprise. He, he was in the play, and his 15 <laughs> seconds of fame has been assured. Pitch is taken inside. One ball, one strike count. We would advise him now to go read Marshall McLuhan. Any book by Marshall McLuhan, that young man should pick up and read. One ball, one strike count on Bernard. Outfield fairly shallow and moved over to left on Bernard. And Mike Hampton. Hampton looking in, thought maybe that was a strike. Two and one. Hit the glove dead center. Pat had that ball framed up on the outside corner, dead center. No call, no strike. Three and one. Mets got those calls. Both actually, both sides got that call last night when Charlie Williams is behind on plate. And that catcher will frame that glove, that glove out there right behind on plate, and the pitcher would hit that glove 
A lot of those umpires will give you those strikes. Shortstop, Bordick. Been a busy day at short. Fastball on the outside part of the plate. Yep. Did not get it out there. Bernard going with it and a screamer to shortstop. Mike Bordick. Right on the button he hit that one. Bill Miller takes a strike. Miller's had the 0 for 2, 0 for 3 in the series so far. And that's with a three game win streak on the line here tonight. 39 minute rain delay, top of the third inning. Pitch taken down low that time, 101. Miller, the regular third baseman. This is the everyday lineup in there for the Giants tonight. Good off speed on that one, one and two. A lot of people said, why didn't the Giants make more moves last year? They finished 14 games up during the offseason, really didn't change much. Looking today, and I didn't realize how many games were missed by their stars. Last year, Bonds was out 58 games, Kent was out 24, and Burks was out 42 with injuries. And that's a primary reason why not many changes were made. The hope was they'd just have those guys back and they'd be all right. And they had the same problem the Mets had. Their manager is going to be out of a contract. Dusty Baker. Eight years as manager of the uh, Giants. Only Tom Kelly of Minnesota. Bobby Cox of the Atlanta Braves. Felipe Alou of Montreal have been at their current jobs longer than he. And they both kind of feel the same way. Slighted. Bobby Valentine made it clear earlier. Didn't understand why he wasn't offered a new deal. And Dusty Baker has said much the same thing. What did I do wrong? And both are rumored to be a possible manager of the L.A. Dodgers. Davy Johnson's job on the line. Then the Dodgers have headed south again. Off the end of the bat. Two ball, two strike count with one down. And both teams, obviously, not only postseason contention teams, but teams with a legitimate shot at picking up a ring. 2 2 delivery by Hampton. And Miller stays off the heater. And the Giants closing in on a million in attendance above where they were last year because of the new ballpark and playing well, playing extremely well at Pac Bell Park. Their attendance is way up at home. Miller looks like he got the same kind of swing that Kent does, Clark Kent. Clark Kent. I'm calling him Clark from now on. Okay. <laughs> He's having a super he grand is, year, I'll he? tell you that. There's Clark right there, mild mannered second baseman for the San Francisco Giants. He really has a dual personality, there's no doubt about that. Well, he's some some offensive year. And that one is gonna miss outside, and Hampton didn't like that call. Oh, he caught it barehanded. <laughs> First he gave it that knees down he went into that catcher's crouch which is always a sign that he makes to the umpires I didn't like it and Pratt's toss back he caught barehanded. Now that pitch is outside the catcher got to go that far for that pitch it's got to be outside. Yeah that falls away. Now I think he just said I, he knew he missed it. I don't think he was upset with the umpire but he just made a bad pitch and he was upset with himself. Hit into right field by Bonds, a base hit. So that'll get him out of his over. Had an 0 for 1 in this one, 0 for 5 in the series, and 0 for his last nine. Delivers a single here in the fifth inning. You know, Bonds made the last out, his last out in the third inning. He ground out weak to the second base, and you wonder. I mean, that kind of guy, same thing with Mike Piazza. It was in a game if he hasn't gotten a hit the night before. And not a hit tonight. You wonder when they're going to jump up and sting you. Now, P, uh, Mike Hampton got that ball up and out over the plate, and good hitters will hit mistakes, and they'll hit it hard. And that's exactly what Bonds did in that situation. Should 
Pitchers generally protect their hands, their pitching hands, at all times. Sometimes pitchers are accused of not being too smart. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, did I do that for a living too? <laughs> Jeff Kent takes it to right field. Runners are halfway. Bonds is going to tag, but the runner at second didn't tag. He's got to get back to first base and does. Ellis. The catch was made and you saw Bonds tag up and start down to second base but Bill Miller had gone halfway. So they were coming towards one another back towards second base. Well Bonds was certainly at fault in this play because you have to watch the runner in front of you. Miller at second base is right there at the bag and didn't go after the ball was caught. Bonds has to put the brakes on and goes back to first base, so no harm done. Well, Miller made a bad play. He was halfway down, didn't know whether to go, not go, did not pick up Sonny Jackson at third. By the time he got back to the bag, Bell had already thrown it in. Ellis Burks, runners at first and second, two down now. Kent retired on the fly ball, a big out there. Burks reached on an error and is lined out to score to run. Grounded a third, top play, McEwing gets the out. <laughs> the depth of the New York Mets continues to show in for Ventura, Joe McEwing. Time for our Dodge trivia question, the one to which those of us in the booth rarely have an answer that's correct. On this date in 79, the Mets traded Willie Montanez to Texas for what two players? Ralph, you're our only hope. <laughs> you're right. You're out of hope. Didn't even ask me. I know you don't know. I know I don't know, but you could have <laughs> given me the courtesy of asking. I have no idea. <laughs> And the pitch is taken for a ball. Mike Hampton leads it off here. Called out on strikes his first time up. Bordick and Bell. Due here in the fifth inning. Giants with a 2 1 lead. 2 0 count. Sean Estes has walked two, struck out two. Balls behind the opposing pitcher here in a hurry. Ball three. I think your best chance on that question is to say if a player to be named later. That's good. And your next best chance is to say two players to be named. <laughs> oh, man. Walked him on four straight pitches. How managers will turn gray and how pitching coaches will have their stomachs upset. Dave Rigetti, the pitching coach for Dusty Baker. It'll happen. Left fielder will run over and give the ball to a fan with two outs and the opposing pitcher, there's Dave Rigetti, will walk the opposing walk the pitcher for on four pitches. Wow. With a two run lead. With a one run lead, two to one. I think he's calling the pitches? Sure looks like he's calling uh, he may be calling defensive plays. Yeah. One of the things Dusty Baker does, he gives responsibility to his coaches. They say this is you go. This is your responsibility. You do this. It's either a pitch out or whatever defensive play. That's a pitch. he's giving him the signs of what to do, how to go to first base. Not today. We're getting about coming over here to the Giants and taking over the pitching coach roles from Ron Peronowski. He said he came in was very quiet, very early. Just got to know them and didn't walk in and say, okay, you've got to change this and you've got to do that and you've got to do that. Almost as if to say, all right, you're gonna be our, we're gonna be friends before we're gonna get any suggestions. And he's he's real happy with what he's doing. Rags. One strike count on Bordick, who had his 19th home run last time up, two for two in the ball game. Jammed on that one down to third. Bill Muller's second one, Kent the relay, and they turn two. Good try in the takeout slide by Hampton at second base, but Jeff Kent can turn at the keystone and there are two down. Man alive, you talk about double plays. John Estes can get some double plays. Good sinker, hit the bottom half of the bat. 
Good turn at third base by Bill Miller and a good turn by Jeff Kent. One of the things about Sean Estes when he's on the mound, you know that infield is looking for and thinking double play. Boy, the pitchers love that. How about a huge mistake? Walk the pitcher on four pitches and get the double play. There's the numbers on double play ground out. Sean Estes, 30. You know you're going to get some sinkers and a pretty good changeup. A guy that's that has that kind of number and only given up seven home runs. You know he's hitting the bottom of the bat. Two in this game. And Bell takes it outside for a 2-0 count. It's sort of like you uh, when you leave the leg and pick off the first base. A lot of men on base. You get double plays and pickoffs. It's been a problem for Sean Estes throughout his career. He walks a lot of people and uh, historically has not done particularly well at getting leadoff batters out in an inning. So that double play ground ball really saves That's him. That's the biggest mistake right there. Two all count on Bell. Head into a double play and single. And outside to him, three and all. Bell seven for 22 lifetime off this left hander. Two to one, Giants on top with a couple of honor and runs with two met errors in the game. And another walk on four straight pitches. Four in the game for him. Estes last year was second in walks in the league. One of the reasons that he ended up with that 500 mark, 112 walks last year and 200 innings. This year he's cut that back somewhat. Still those 78 walks and 140 innings. Now Edgardo Alfonso, 0 for 2, ground ball out, flied out to right. In the dirt, Bobby Estalea blocking that one. Bell at first base with two down. And Alfonso takes it up high. He's two for six so far in these two games. And that will bring Reggetti out to talk to uh, his pitcher who's losing that strike zone. that rhythm. I want to remind you International Week continues tomorrow Jewish Heritage Day kosher food stands throughout the stadium. Singer Yo Sharabi will be performing pregame 718-507-TIXX for tickets website at Mets.com. Jewish Heritage Day here at Shea tomorrow. Still can't find it. 3-0 count. It's like what happened. Not even close. And he walks him on four straight pitches. Three walks in the inning, but there are two down and two on. He pitched this way last inning, Gary, when he was pitching to Todd Pratt. Runner on first base, and almost as if he did not want to pitch to Pratt with a runner all the way around at first. Now, Hampton, I don't know what was going on, not even close on those pitches to him. Uh, twice now has walked somebody to first base and forced the runner into scoring position. And it almost looked like he didn't want to pitch to Alfonso. I mean, this is no piece of cake in Todd Zeal either. Two down. Way outside. That's 13 out of the strike zone and two in the strike zone in this inning. Count. Rogetti's trying to find the sign for a strike. 
Bell down at second base. Alfonso at first. Two and zero to Zeal. That's ten in a row. He has walked as many as six in a game a number of times this year. Five walks in this one. And that one's going to get away, and the runners will move up. You are seeing a pitcher self destruct in front of your eyes. Uh, Jeff Kent's going to try and figure this out. What? Uh, if you if you wanted to script anything, look who's in the on deck circle. Benny Agbayani. And he's pitching Estes as if he wants no part of Todd Zeal either. Could you script it any better? Only the conclusion we don't know. It would be uh, another movie that uh, would uh, tell a great story if it comes about. 3 old count, Zeal. Sean Estes gets a strike and just barely. And he got a good call there. Borderline at best. <laughs> On the outside corner, strike. Oh, the ball's way up. Oh, no, way, way outside. Way out there. You see the catcher reach out there? Still can't get it. Six walks in the game. Four in this inning have loaded the bases. And here comes Theater. Benny Agbayani. Strike two. And the first pitch, it went inside. That's the Allen went inside. Trying to get the strike inside. He, that's his finally did throw a strike. Agbayani with one grand slam this year. One of the seven hit by the Mets. His, of course, came in Tokyo. Sean Estes trying to work out of an incredible inning. Which he's walked for and hasn't given up a run. Ground ball to short. Rich Aurelia second, and he gets out of the inning. No runs, no. Oh, yeah. Well, this uh, story made uh, tonight with Jim and Jake Burns. Jim the dad, Jake the youngster, and Jim Higgins caught up with the man who got the ball. What did you think as he was coming over to give you the ball? Good. Yeah. Mr. Burns, what was your reaction as your son was getting the ball from Benny? At first, I was surprised. I was very surprised they gave him the ball. And then uh, I saw my son's face light up. He turned around to face the crowd. And then the next thing, I saw Benny taking the ball back and throwing it to third. How did you feel when he took the ball back? Sad. Was it the first time you got a ball at a baseball game? Yeah. Were you happy that they brought you back another one? Yeah. Did you expect anything to happen like this at the game tonight? Of course not. But, uh... You know, I was a little disappointed that he did take the ball back because obviously it was too late. And uh, then when he gave him the ball after he was warming up, I thought it was a great gesture. That was really terrific of him. Rich Aurelia grounding out there. So that was Jake Burns, the youngster, and his father, Jim. And Benny Agbayani, that's the youngster he handed the ball to down there in that left field line. I like the youngster style of broadcasting. <laughs> Brevity. Succinct Brevity. and delivery. Reminded point. me of Choo Choo Coleman when I interviewed him. <laughs> <laughs> One of my all time favorites. You know, the great lines in broadcasting history from Ralph. I asked Choo Choo how'd they get his nickname, and I figured that he'd have something to say about trains or whatever. <laughs> he says, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I love it. 
<laughs> and what about what? Did you ask him what his wife's name was? Yeah, she, she liked me, Bub. <laughs> he called everybody Bub. <laughs> uh, J.T. Snow. Hit by a pitch twice and strikes out. Kuchi Coleman was my catcher. Sometimes my first year in Jacksonville, my first professional year off in Triple A. He came to the mound. Why'd you throw, Bub? And I said, "Excuse me." Excuse me. Why'd you Bub? I called Bob everybody. Everybody called everybody Bob. Bobby Estelle, a ground ball cut off by McEwing. Now there's a quick inning. Dodge trivia trivia question as we're back at Shea here, two to one ball game on this date. My glasses on, I can read this. In 1979, the Mets trade Willie Martinez to the Texas Rangers for what two players? I like this. This might be one of the West best quizzes we have all year, right here. I hey, that was what I was going to say. Mike yeah. Doris and Ed Litch. I heard Ralph say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good quiz. That's because those are two really important players in the history of the New York Mets, and that's an excellent quiz for our guys in the truck. <laughs> And Ed Lynch just resigned as the GM of the Chicago Cubs. I think that's why we put him in the trivia question. Just so we could bring his name up and say that. Ed Jorgie is with the St. Louis Cardinals. Yep. I was gonna guess I was gonna guess Rusty Stop. And a player to be named later. Which would make I would have made it a lousy one. One more uh, remark about Choo Choo Coleman. Uh, Casey Stengel said about Choo Choo Coleman. He was the fastest catcher he ever had going after pass balls. <laughs> There's a compliment hidden there somewhere. <laughs> he used to come to mind. He said, what throw above? And I finally had to get Buddy Harrelson to say, what's he saying? <laughs> I called Buddy Harrelson for sure stuff. I said, Buddy, what's he saying? He says, he wants to know what you throw, Tom. Oh, what do you throw, Bob? Oh, I got you. Okay. Choo Choo Coleman was once printed for a bus. What? Uh, uh, traded for a bus. Traded One of those buses, bus? yeah, that hauled ball players around to different cities in the league. Is that it? Is that all you're going to tell me? Well, that's all. <laughs> Maybe the bus didn't run. I don't know. <laughs> and the one story, they asked him what his now wife's name was, and he said, Mrs. Coleman. Well, that's the correct answer, right? Mm -hmm. One ball, one strike count on Jay Pate. And Sean Estes reared back on that one. One and two. 92 on that fastball. He's still gunning along here in the sixth inning, protecting a 2 1 lead. 27 year old left hander. Way up high with that one. Two and two. Four walks in the last inning. He got a double play and a fielder's choice to get out of the inning without giving up a run. That's a stranded seven. The interesting thing about all four walks, one pitch was called a strike that really was not a strike. All the rest were on four pitches. Souvenir. Jay Payton is a fastball hitter, high fastball hitter. And that was the breaking ball right there. He must have seen it early because he kept his hands back and waited. That ball looked like it was down and in. That's a pretty good swing. But he must have read the curveball real early. And when you're doing that, you're really opening up that body when you're throwing the ball. And that's all those high fastballs that he has been throwing. Estes, boy, he just missed on that. Three and two again. Talking about the walks he gave up. Yields 4.8 walks per nine innings throughout his career. This one the other way to right field in the corner. Ellis Burks in fair territory. And there's one away. Peyton retired here in the sixth inning. And a reminder tonight, 11.30, the movie that made a generation want to get up and dance and made a kid from New Jersey a superstar. WB11 proud to present Saturday Night Fever. Tonight, 11.30 on the WB11. Night Fever, Night Fever. Get out those platform shoes and 
Let her rip. Todd Pratt. One down, nobody on. Estes misses down low with that one, 2-0. Oh. Well, he certainly makes it interesting when he starts losing that strike zone. Or you wonder. You wonder why. He is good ranked. stuff. That good stuff? Yeah. When he can get it in the strike zone. He's ranked among the wildest pitchers in three of the last four years in the league. Comes back again on the 2-0 count. Pop-up, wind blowing to the right field line. Jeff Kent went out to get it. Two down, sixth inning. 51 strikes, 47 balls. Not much of a ratio there. The Mets have not hit the ball hard since the third inning when Borde hit the home run. Peyton had a single in the fourth inning. That was an infield single. They've hit the ball hard. And he doesn't want to throw it in the strike zone. Different way to pitch a game. It makes it interesting for somebody. It doesn't make it interesting for Dusty Baker and Dave Rigetti. Let's put it that way. Joe no, McEwing's over for 2. He's popped out and grounded out. One of the, one of the things that Dave Rigetti is trying to do with this pitching staff coming over here as pitching coach is trying to get them to get and we talk about it all the time Gary about these pitches that are pitching five in the third or six or the third innings and getting out of the ball game. He's trying to force these starters to get past the seventh inning. He said we have to come get you your chances of winning that ball game are diminished completely. I mean immensely. He wants he's trying to get the idea the mentally the idea of trying to get them across get them across to them that finish the inning get that last out of the inning if you're doing that that relievers going out there there's nobody on in the ninth inning he's trying to get him to get past that seventh seventh inning other pop up shallow center that winds really blowing in now Lava Bernard goes out to get it that's going to be a one two three inning we completed six here at Shea game two of the four game set with the breeze blowing in Giants lead it two to one afternoon Atlanta beating the Dodgers Maddox the winner Cincinnati shut out Chicago. Phillies victory over Houston. Big win for the Cardinals in 12 and uh, extra innings. Look, zip zip in that one in the 10th. Boy, is there Arizona keeps struggling now. Huh? Yep. Are you going to cry when the uh, Red Sox score comes up or why should anything change this year? Okay. Just wondered. Just wondered if we're going to see consistency in this. Absolutely. Or, all right. We'll shed a tear then. See, we I'm 39 now. It's been 39 years I've been crying. <laughs> and I'm buying that, are you? No, I'm oh. buying the consistency, though. Thank you. <laughs> Thought we'd try and throw that in. Yeah. I got the gist. Too bad. Cardinals with a five and a half game lead over Cincinnati. Giants leading Arizona by two starting the day. Grounded to third. McEwing again. And Sean Estes is retired on the ground ball out, went away in the seventh. We're on the seventh inning. Leading off, you got the pitcher and Dusty Baker saying, nope, you're out there. He wants that pitcher to go. 11 and 3 on the year, looking for victory number 12. You're up by a run. You've only given up four hits, 104 pitches so far in those six innings. And that's a little bit of what we we're talking about before. Dave Rigetti trying to get those starters to get deeper into the ball game. Almost as if we're swinging. Dusty Baker trying to swing back to the way it was before. And try to redefine the setup men and the pre-setup men. A lot of managers today, for whatever the reason, and you can go back and trace it, they look for a reason to take the pitcher out. If you're starting pitcher, he's one of the best pitchers on your team, supposedly. They look for reasons to take that pitcher out. They should be losing, looking for reasons to leave him in, as opposed to get him, extract him, and get him out of the boat. And that's kind of the theory that Rigetti and Dusty Baker are trying to apply to their pitching staff. 
Marvin Bernard fouls that one off at the plate. One ball, one strike count on the leadoff batter. One for three. Well, Estes has the four complete games and two shutouts this year to lead the Giants staff in each of those categories. In fact, the only uh, two shutouts Giants have belong to him. They've gotten a couple of complete games from Levon Hernandez who's going to pitch in tomorrow's game and that's it six complete games on the year. They are rarities indeed. Mets have seven complete games. And they are led by Mike Hampton's three. Lendon Rush with a couple. There is Sean Estes. Who's probably not looking for the complete game but looking to get that lead into the eighth inning. Showing bunt. Bernard draws the bat back two and two. Sorry about complete games, and one of those complete games that he has is 18 to nothing. He won that game 18 to nothing. Shutout victory. And the other one was six to nothing. Mike Hampton, the 2 2 delivery. And the center field, Peyton will back up a bit. Two down. <laughs> Levon Hernandez and Al Leiter tomorrow. WB 11's got the game, 1 o'clock airtime. Russ Ortiz and Rick Reed on Monday night. Fox Sports New York at 7. And then the doubleheader on Tuesday. Monday, the night game. Tuesday, the doubleheader starts at 5-10. Mets are going to pitch Bobby Jones against Pedro Estacio. Game two decisions have not been made yet. There'll be a Wednesday night game here. And then Thursday afternoon. Bill Miller with a 1 0 count, and two down. And Hampton. And down low with that one. He has had uh, pretty good at bats, 20 pitches taken against Mike Hampton. And Bill Miller's at bats, including a walk he got in the fifth inning. A strikeout popped out, doesn't have anything to show for it on the board. Hampton, the strike there, 2 and 1. And Hampton, about 105 pitches, 104, 105. To put that number of pitches, 104. Put that number in perspective. You're talking about Gary. Well, oh, he is a clone of Jeff Kent. Gene Klein's a batting coach for this ball club, and I'm telling you that that swing is exactly the swing that Jeff Kent uses. Now the pitch counts for Mike Hampton. Well, Phil Miller can be as successful as Jeff Kent with the swing. He's got a long and illustrious retirement, yeah. Edwin. What a bad swing to emulate. Two ball, two strike count with two down. This pitcher is getting tougher as it rolls along here. Two one ball game. Giants runs both on earned in the fourth inning. Kent got a double. Burks reached on an error. And then the play in left field. And Benny Angbiani made a catch thinking there were already two down. There weren't. One run scored on the sack fly and the second run on the error when he handed the ball to a young fan. By the time he got it back, another run had scored. Foul back again. Those are the only runs off Hampton. Mets have the homer by Bordick, his 19th. Came in the third inning. And that's it. Two ball, two strike count. Hampton has never lost. Against the Giants, he is 8 and 0. Fouled off outside of third. Mike Hampton against the San Francisco Giants has 15 career appearances. This is the 15th. ERA against the Giants, 3.38 in his career. Non decision in the start in San Francisco this year. Three ball, two strike count of Bill Miller, so he continues to pile up the pitches against Hampton. And he walked in. Well, that's what Mike Hampton did not want to do, that's for sure, to face Barry Bonds. When fatigue sets in, and every pitcher is different, and you're different on an individual night. And Hampton up to about 110 pitches. That's not a lot for him, but that's being in it on border light and a, a borderline and a muggy night here tonight. And we saw what Bonds did last time up when Mike Hampton made the mistake up and out over the plate, the line drive to right field. Bonds, a great mistake hitter. And uh, there's a little rain coming down. 
Little. Just a dangerous a, moment here. Just a we missed. Just a we missed. Takes the pitch down low, 2 0 count. It was a bad count right here. And it doesn't get easier with a man in the on deck circle, too. This is real vulnerable time for a pitcher. Right on the borderline of fatigue, trying to be too fine, gets behind. Way inside, 3 0 count. Green light? Why not? Absolutely. 10 30 home run seasons. 800 RBI seasons. MVP three times, eight time All Star, and a future Hall of Famer. 3 0 count. Bonds not close enough to go after. Fourth walk given up by Hampton. Two back to back here in the seventh inning, and Kent's coming up now with two on and two down. Dave Wallace on his way to the mound. Tom, does he want to know how he feels? You want an honest answer here? Well, that's what you want from your pitchers. The decision may have been made already. They go to the right-hander against Jeff Kent. This is you know, one of the best hitters in baseball. Two of them back to back. That's exactly what he wanted. When you see Dave Wallace run out to the mound, it is not to take the pitcher out. When he walks, he's gone. 114 pitches for Mike Hampton, who has been really the ultimate warrior for this pitching staff. I mean, he is a he is a great competitor. And they say one we want you to get one more out. Let's go. One more out. Turk Wendell in the bullpen. Bust your rear end and get this guy out and get us in here and we'll get you a couple of runs. Another key moment in this game. Jeff Kent. Second in RBIs in the league behind Sosa. Two on, two down. Kent batting 341, and he did go around on that. Jim Reynolds at first base to call. Kent has doubled, singled, and flied out. Lifetime against Hampton. The couple of hits that he's added in this ball game. About a 220 hitter with one home run. 0 1 count. Miller at second, Bonds at first. Kent takes it inside, one and one. And if you're an MVP candidate, this is where you get your base hit right here. Same thing that Mike Piazza has been doing all year long, getting those clutch hits. The Mets playing way around the right field. Are they going to try and pitch Kent in off the plate inside and get him out of the way? That seems to be the system. A chopper, McEwing cuts it off, running throw in the dirt, bobbled. Got a chance at third. No, everybody's on. Turn made by Bill Miller, but he got back. And the Mets will be charged, I believe, with their third error of the game here. How much did the runner bother Joe McEwing at third base trying to field that ball from Jeff Kent? Yeah, you lose it for just a second. He just lost his balance as he let the ball go. It would have been a great play by Todd Zeal. What Zeal's doing in that situation is not letting that ball get by him. Almost as if to say, all right, I can see now. I mean, I can see the safe at first base, but I'm not letting that runner from the third score, and I'm not letting the runner Bond score from second base. McEwing charged with the error. Three committed by the Mets. Two unearned runs already on the board. That should have been the third out. Instead, Hampton is going to face Ellis Burks. And Burks has hit over 300 against him in his career with three home runs off Hampton. 0 for 3 in the game. Did reach on an error and scored. 2 1 giant lead. Outside Ellis Burks, ball one. What's Bobby Valentine saying to Mike Hampton? Go get him. You're a big guy. Go get him. You are a number one pitcher. And you've earned it. To sit out there and get a chance to win or lose it yourself. That is exactly what he's saying. Leaving him in to face the guy in the lineup who gives him yep. historically the most trouble. Absolutely. That's kind of beer. It's, 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 this is what he's saying. You're the kind of pitcher. We don't care if it's right or left handed. You are an ace. You're a stopper. And we want you to get out of this inning. 
They're the best we got right now. Go get them. Two walks and an error have created the opportunity here in the seventh inning for the Giants. Burks asked for the timeout. Burks, 35 years old, a career 289 hitter. This year, 344 and productive. 14 homers, 56 RBIs. 1 1 delivery. Down low, 2 and 1. Coming a little harder. 2 1. Lifted the center. Peyton there. Over. No runs, no hits, and error. Bases are left loaded. Seventh inning stretch time. As you can see, it's raining. We're going to play. Bubba Trammell is the pinch hitter. So Mike Hampton out of the ball game. With a 2 1 score here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Travel 0 for 5 with the Mets as a pinch hitter. Leading it off here in the bottom half of the seventh. Hampton went seven innings, two runs, neither earned. Five hits, he walked three and walked four and struck out three. John Estes still on the mound for the Giants. Six walks, two strikeouts. There's Hampton who now hopes that's going to lead in this inning. He could win it. 2 1. Way outside. Estes. It is amazing to watch this. I mean, when he loses it, he, he's so far out of the strike zone, he's got his catcher jumping all over the place. Trammell will take that for a strike, 3 and 2. And some pitches look like they're almost unhittable. And some of them look like they're six feet from the strike zone. I'm not just barely missing, missing by a mile. Like that. Seven walks. Let's take a look at the out of town scoreboard brought to you by Toyota. Dusty Baker's on his way out to make a pitching change. Let's do that first. So Estes has walked himself out of the game. A leadoff walk here in the seventh inning for Trammell. And a seven walk game for Sean Estes is 11 and three on the year. And it's now in the hands of the giant bullpen. Take you through the finals in the American League. Big game for Toronto again as they try and stay in the race, but they're losing. So is Boston. The Yankees underway against Anaheim. Couple of changes on the double shift. Rios comes in the ball game to play in right field. And on the mound, a 27 year old right hander, Felix Rodriguez. Rodriguez has done a good job of middle relief for this ball club. Team high 58 games now that he's appeared in, and just two earned runs in the last 17 worked. Those 17 and a third innings and in those 17 appearances for him. Comes on here with Mike Bordick up, runner at first base, nobody out. Bordick, the homer in the third inning, is 19. Trammell got the walk. He's at first, being held by J.T. Snow. A bunt popped up at the plate and handled by Escalea, almost running into or snow running into him. This same situation came up the, the other day when we were in Houston, the Mets and the Astros. And Mike Piazza and Todd Zeal were going after the ball, and it was Bobby Jones was going to be the quarterback or should have been the quarterback in that game for the Mets. And here the new pitcher's got to get over there and be the quarterback. One or the other. That was a near collision. You, know, you would lose an out. He's either got to go over there and call his catcher or call his first baseman, J.T. Snow, to get the ball. Yeah. Ducking on out of there. Oh, and out there. 
Escalea gets it. And now Derek Bell. Rodriguez out of Monte Cristi in the Dominican Republic came to the Giants from Arizona in a trade last year. Interesting, he had three years as a Dodger in the minors as a catcher. And then they converted him into a pitcher. And he's been working since 93 as a pitcher. Now 27 years old and pretty good at it by the numbers he's put up this year. Derek Bell fouls it back into the screen. Two strike count. You get the feeling that he came out of those minor leagues with a Ivan Rodriguez arm, don't you? Sure it looks like Let's it. not waste that on a guy that can't hit. Put a pitching toe on his shoe and set him out there on the rubber. A good job in middle relief. Left hander sitting just 140 off him. Right hander's 280. Third in the league in appearances this year. 0 2 count on Bell. This up high with it a one ball, two strike count from Felix Rodriguez. Giants bullpen has been effective, particularly after the All Star break. Much like the Mets, both starters and both pens have done really well for these teams. A little slider misses outside. Two ball, two strike count on Bell. A little rain, got to clear the water off the glass so they can see from the bullpen. Never know, they might be called. You can get bet what Bobby Valentine is thinking right now is hoping this count goes three and two. So he can start his runner. If he wanted a scenario to happen, that's exactly what he would ask for. Trammell at first, back to the bag. Bell is grounded into one double play tonight, and he is hit into nine on the year. Rodriguez two ball two strike count rain is stopped again Bell takes it up high and there's the count how many times tonight have we seen three two counts especially uh, about the fourth inning on when Estes was pitching and here's another one right here with one out three and two the bell Alfonso on deck 3 2 1 down. See if they throw over here and try and catch Trammell leaning. Nope, he goes. And a ball is popped up. Estalea. Not enough room. Three and two on Bell again. Got the importance of that ball three to Derek Bell. Takes the double play away. You can start the runner, you can score on a double. Ralph Kiner was talking about that earlier in the broadcast. A lot of pitchers that don't use the count in their favor, or at least when they run it to three and two, they put the count in the offensive team's favor. Now you haven't walked anybody, but you sure have given the advantage to the opposition. Three ball, two strike count on Bell. Again, Trammell running. And again, foul back. And on top of that, the hitter can sit on a pitch. He can eliminate certain pitches. He can eliminate whatever a pitcher's third pitch is. Now, hitters on the New York Mets will go to Tom Robson and say, you know, this is this on this pitcher, what's his best pitch? What's his out pitch? What's he gonna throw me when he has to get me out? Robson will have those answers. The process of elimination, then all of a sudden you can sit on a pitch. Rodriguez almost in, entirely a fastball pitcher. He's got a little slider we've seen, Tom, but that's it. That slider was pretty good, too. He just missed. And that's, it broke late right at the plate. 
That's the yep. one he's been working and on. And we have not seen it since they thrown it once in this entire sequence of pitches. Throws in the mid 90s. It's fastball. Trammel again. Running. 3 2. Fastball. Ninety-seven miles an hour on the radar gun here at Chase Stadium. If you believe the radar gun, pretty close, I think. Battle going on here. Bell fourth, three-two pitch in this at bat. Trammell runs and struck him out. Estelle is throw. Time. Scott Higgins thought about that one a couple of times, I think. Had me fooled. Thought he was going to make the out call originally. Trammell is in with a stolen base. It looked like the umpire at second base was going to ring him up. You see that delay, and it's almost as if they prepare for the big punch out call. The throw was high and the runner indeed safe at second base right above the top of the strike zone. If that ball is down dead out at second base Bubba Trammell. And that's how close it is. It's just the movement from there where he caught the ball right there to there. If that ball run on the money out. That's the fraction of the second in the baseball game that makes the difference. Gives out Gardo Alfonso a chance. First stolen base for Trammell with the Mets. Now Alfonso with the runner in scoring position. A base hit could tie this game up. That's a pretty good little slider. That's the one Gary you're talking about he's been working on. That food luck out at Gardo. Alfonso was up there looking for fastball. Pulled the string on it. One strike pitch on the outside corner again. Same pitch. Strike count and two down. Giants with a 2 1 lead in the seventh. Rodriguez on for Estes. Alfonso takes it away. One and two. John Estes, six plus innings, four hits, seven walks, and two strikeouts for him. That is a season high in walks for Estes. Still got a chance to win this game, though. The lead is protected, and that's what Rodriguez is trying to do right here. Trammell off second base. One two delivery. Outside to Alfonso. Rob Nen, one of the game's best closers, gets that job for the Giants. Mike Hampton hoping. Mets get a lead or tie it. He's got a chance to win it or be non-decisioned in this game. Bonzi with the 0 for 2 and a walk, waiting on a 2 2. Laid on it. It'll stay a 2 2 count. From this whole sequence of pitches, Rodriguez has not gone inside. It has been slider, slider, and then missed with two sliders out there, or and or fastballs, cut fastballs on the outside part of the plate. And there again, a little nickel slider or maybe a cut fastball again. Never once went inside to set up a pitch. Fonzie's just looking to hit the ball to right field. He's looking away. Because that's the only place he's seen the baseball. 2 2 delivery again. Up high with it. Three balls and two strikes. Zeal waiting on deck. Blowing in throughout this game tonight still is tough to get one out of you. And up high and walking. So a leadoff walk to Trammell, now a two on walk to Alfonso. You got to really have to poke one, get it through the wind here at Shea tonight. Todd Zeal coming up with two down, and that will bring Rigetti back to the mound. To be 
a fly on the wall there with nine walks by the pitching staff for the Giants here tonight. Let's see if I can read what he's saying. You got to be aggressive, go after him, those three and two counts. Six lifetime off Felix Rodriguez. Two down and two on. Zeal takes it inside and high for a ball, and Rodriguez has been way off the strike zone with the last two hitters. I think Sean Estes and uh, Rodriguez went to lunch together, huh? <laughs> Throw the same kind of pitches that aren't even close. away and the runners will move up. Trammell goes to third. Alfonso to second. Estes had a wild pitch. Rodriguez with a wild pitch. Well is this a cross up or just a bad pitch? Well you saw the catcher set up down and away and Rodriguez got down underneath that ball cut it. Well, looking down and in, and threw it up and away. That's the question now. But they're you know, thinking on the bench, what are we going to do? Two balls, no strikes to Todd Zeal, who is a good, intelligent hitter. So we walk him. And again, Agbayani's the man on deck. And there's a man on the bench over there for the New York Mets that you know, Dusty Baker knows over there. Is over there too, is Mike Piazza. There he is, and that helmet is not on there, <laughs> but for only one reason. Batting gloves are on. Bats at the ready. Todd Zeal, two ball, one strike count. Right back with a fastball, right down the middle with it, two and two. Rodriguez has thrown three wild pitches this year, putting two in scoring position for the Mets here in the seventh. And now Todd Zeal looking for the big hit. Straight back. Got me. I flinched. I flinched. Right, right back at me. Down remains at two balls and two strikes. Zeal 280 with runners in scoring position. 60 RBIs on the year. Base hit could add two. Travel off third, Alfonso at second, and a pop up that'll go out of play. Two good ball clubs doing battle again. These teams, the season ended right now, would face each other in the first round of the playoffs. The Mets would be the wild card. Mets couldn't play Atlanta, same division, could play Giants. And a base hit down the right field line. Trammell scores. Alfonso scores. Throw to second. Seal. In with a double. Three to two Mets. Mistake after mistake by the giant pitching staff. And finally, they capitalize in the double down the right field line by Zeal and go ahead by a run three to two. Benny Agbayani. Todd Zeal 
sixty two RBIs on the year thirty two doubles and the Mets have a three two lead and Hampton could be a winner two runs charged to Sean Estes he is non decisioned in this game Rodriguez is now the pitcher of record the has is taking the helmet off and going to go sit down Benny Agbayani. Two ball, one strike count. Agbayani is struck out. Fielder's choice. Fly it out. Three eleven is average on the year. Mike Hampton could be a 12 game winner. Runner at second, two down. I guess a good ball club by the, like the Mets, you just cannot continue to give them opportunities if you expect to beat them. And the pitching staff of the Giants have done that here tonight. Good clubs will get you. You give them enough chances, they'll get you. Two walks in this inning, Tom, and they are the runs. Yeah. And they were lucky not to, talking about the Giants, not to have given up runs earlier the way that Estes could. No saying about well he didn't deserve to win anyway. My captain pitched very well. He did deserve. He does deserve to win. He battled and battled and battled. Two ball, two strike count. Agbayani goes down swinging, but the Mets on Todd Zeal's two RBI, two out double, helped out by a wild pitch that moved the runners up, and the Mets lead it. The winner. Kirk Wendell will come on in relief as we go to the eighth inning. Outstanding ball game and the Mets trying for another come from behind. Our Toyota line score three five and three for New York two five and zero oh for the Giants. Both runs on earn for the Giants. Changes here with Wendell coming on to pitch. McEwing will go from third base to left field with Benny Agbayani coming out of the ball game. Rami Ventura. And the night off as a starter is now back in at third base. And there's the man. On in relief, Turk Wendell. A workhorse for the New York Mets out of that bullpen the last couple of years. 60 a time at Turk has worked and 60.2, 60 and two thirds innings pitched. 43 hits. The one thing about Turk. He has given up eight home runs in those 60 innings. He's third in the major league in appearances, and he'll face Rich Aurelia. We'll lead it off here. Aurelia Snow and Estalea do up. Three two lead for the Mets. The Mets have won a dozen ball games this year. In which they have trailed after six. Aurelia takes a strike. They are 12 and 36, where they've trailed after six innings. Trying to add to that total here tonight on the positive side for them. Aurelia with a single in the second inning, one for three. Each team with five hits in the game now. Mike Hampton trying to go 9 and 0 in his career against the Giants. Wendell's 0 1 delivery. Hit in the air to left field. McEwing. One away in the eighth. Well, if it goes according to Hoyle and the way the script was written, it's Turk for this inning. And then Armando Benitez. And the only thing wrong with the script is that Benny Agbiani didn't drive in the two go ahead runs, the go ahead run in the seventh inning. But this is exactly what Bobby Valentine wants to do. Have that set up man, Turk Wendell, come in in the eighth inning. Or the number of set up men that he has now down in that bullpen, very deep in the bullpen, and very fresh and very strong. And hand it over to Armando in the ninth. This is a big out right here, left hander against right hander. Mets starters, as you look at Agbayani and Hampton, 12 and 4 in their last 18 games, with an ERA of 3.25, and Hampton 
chance to up both of those numbers since the runs off him the two were unearned. One one delivered to J.T. Snow fouled off. And of course as we said as Ralph pointed out for Benny Agbayani the victory by the Mets makes his forever error in the gloaming here on Irish night one that will be smiled at even if remembered. One two. Just down low with that two ball two strike count on Snow. Hit by a pitch twice and is struck out. And Snow takes the ground ball to first zeal. Good coverage by Turk Wendell. Take a look at the Mets upcoming schedule brought to you by Taco Bell. Two more games against these Giants with LeVon Hernandez and Al Leiter tomorrow. Russ Ortiz and Rick Reed on Monday. And then Colorado, the doubleheader Tuesday starts at 5. Game 2 to follow. Wednesday at 7 and Thursday at 1. Upcoming Taco Bell schedule for the Mets. Bobby Estalea. Are 22 and 14 in one run ball games this year. Plus, for their bullpen, the Giants, if they have an Achilles heel and or tendon, it's the one run ball games. They are 10 and 19 in one run games. Not a good number. Part of that reason is that their bullpen struggled in the first half of the year. And still, overall, their bullpen earned run average is only 11th in the league. Estalea fooled by that slider. Two and one. The biggest thing in these first two games for me, Gary, if you look about it, the one run game last night, and the Giants only got the one run. They two runs here tonight. This is a good ball club, good score on offensive ball club, but they have come in here. And the Met pitching staff has held them to three runs in two games if this game were to end as it is right now. And this is a club that's number two in the National League in runs scored. This is not a bunch of but a bunch of punch and Judy's over in that opposing dugout. It's a good ball club. 2 2 delivery. 3 and 2 to Estaleo with two down on the bases empty here in the eighth inning. You got to keep Jeff Ken in the, par in the park. You've got to keep Barry Bonds in the park. You got to keep Ellis Burks in the ballpark. Tom, if Wendell can get the out right here, they may never get to the middle of the order again. And he does. Difference. The rains came. We had a delay, 39 minutes. And the New York Mets regrouped. And they got Sean Estes out of the ball game. The home run hit by El by Mike Bordick in the third inning was his 19th of the year to put the Mets on the board. Then the Mets were able to get back at him in the seventh inning. One of the walks given up by Sean Estes, the other by Rodriguez in the seventh, and both scored on the Zeal double. And the Mets have a 3 2 lead. Jay Payton. And the pitch is a strike to him, one and one from Felix Rodriguez. Bordick's home run, the only one that lasted. Then the Agbayani giving the ball away when there were only two down, getting it back, but a run scored against Hampton. Both ended up being unearned runs in the inning. Mike kept his composure. He got a chance to win it. And a base hit by Payton. Lead-off single for Jay Payton. And a look at our Jeep game summary. Mike Bordick, two for four, the solo home run. Mike Campton worked himself out of a couple of jams here tonight, put himself right in position to pick up win number 12. Seven innings pitch, no earned runs. Sean Estes, look at that, seven base on balls, and that really turns the lineup over. Todd Zeal, the big hit in the ball game so far. The two run double in the seventh inning down the right field line, and that put the Mets ahead. Todd Pratt coming up. Peyton on at first with his second in. Peyton now two for three in the game and seven for his last 12. Peyton making his point about I want to play every day. Felix Rodriguez, the bunt filed off by Todd Pratt. Pratt not asked to bunt very often, but does have a couple of sacrifice bunts this year. 
Bobby, Orlando Benitez getting ready. Bobby Valentine looking for one more run. If we can squeeze it in here. You're exactly right. Jay Payton, I want to play every day, and he's going to play every day. Unless there's a real tough right hand. You can stick Daryl Hamilton in there in center field and give Payton that occasional day off. Bunting right in on him, and uh, that was a foul ball. And a two strike count on Pratt. Jay Payton will come back to first base. Rojas with the signs again. That got the Ario and two put the hit and run on. Hell on the surprise. You got to think about it. Todd Pratt's a better hitter when he has a count of three balls and two strikes when he is protecting the fight or when he goes to right field. Actually, a better hitter than he is when he, the count is 2 0 on him. Missed up high with that one ball, two strike count on Pratt. When he gets ahead in the count, his, he gets a real big swing. He gets that power swing going and becomes a home run hitter. When he gets a couple of strikes on him, he becomes contact hitter. Put it in play. You look back at plays, I was thinking about Todd Pratt, Tom, that play in the third inning. When Marvin Bernard was on and Bonds was up and one down, and he threw him out trying to steal a base. Huge. Threw him out easily, too. Easily. And ended up only three faced in the inning. Fouled off again. Jay Payton was going there, too. And stopped well before Rodriguez threw the pitch, I might add. Mookie Wilson talking to him. But slightly after, Rodriguez had taken his eyes off him. Luckily. Took about three steps towards second base, and Rodriguez, the pitcher, still had the ball. Now Rodriguez has the ball on the mound. He's gone that far, and Rodriguez never saw that. I feel fall in the air. I think they're going to hit and run here somewhere. I'm going to fall right into it. One two count. Oh, oh, back again, trying to go to right. He's trying to hit that ball in that hole. See that flag? Look at the flag in center field blowing straight in. The wind really whipping out there in center field, coming right at us here in the booth. That's right toward home plate. Temperature must have dropped about 20 degrees in the last 24 hours, and light, the humidity about 80 percent down. Light, light breeze coming in from Ireland across light the water, the, across the pond. You know. Little rain, little little moisture. One, two, and he got him. Pratt knew it. Third strikeout for Rodriguez. Tomorrow, don't miss Warren Beatty, Al Pacino, and Madonna in the story of a cop, a city under siege, and a woman in serious need of a pat down. Dick Tracy, tomorrow at 5 on the WB11. the copy by the way one down Daryl Hamilton will be the pinch hitter Hamilton up for McEwing and he's looking down at third two see whether or not Jay Payton is going to be running here. Something's going to happen. It's just a matter of what and when. Hamilton one for two as a pinch hitter with that home run that he hit in his pinch hit at bat in the Houston series. Well, Daryl Hamilton has great back control. Doesn't strike out much. Puts it in play. Smart player. Veteran. No situations. Knows what he has to do. It's a perfect situation for hit and run somewhere in the count. That's so those are two quasi pitch outs right there. Catcher calling for that nothing fastball on the outside part of the plate, yet not going out there early. Well, are you gutsy enough to go to chance it and go to three and zero? Oh? Not many people are. You got to look at hit and run right here. And are not going. Foul back off the fist. Two and one. Hamilton injured so early in the season with that big toe problem he's only playing in his ninth game he's only had 23 at bats 
seemed as though he played longer than that at the start, but did not. That injury came very early. 2 1. And that one is going to be taken up high and a three ball, one strike count on Daryl Hamilton. And looking at Robin Ventura in the on deck circle, he's batting ninth in that double switch that was made in the last inning. Aiden back. Mookie Wilson right up the top to him. Mookie's almost the base runner there. He's right on the field with him. Three one. Runner not going. And he walked him. And the walks just keep on coming. And that will bring Dusty Baker out to the mound. With Robin Ventura coming up, the left handed hitter. Nine walks in this game. Estes with seven, a couple by Rodriguez. Rodriguez is out of the ball game. Mets lead at three to two. Ventura coming up. Fastball slider pitcher. He's worked four and a third scoreless in his last five. A couple of hits and a walk in those outings. He comes on to get Robin Ventura with runners on at first and second and one out. Ventura didn't start because a left hander did and sure enough he gets his first at bat. And there's the left hander. Ventura is hitting 264 off the southpaws and 229 off right handers. That's why you don't play when they start a left hander. Right? <laughs> His average is too it's high. Logic. It's just obvious logic. 1 0 count. He's had 72 at bats against southpaws, 262 off right handers. No throw to second base. Aiden led the inning off with a single. He's at second, the one out walk, the Hamilton at first. Sometimes you see a team play, Gary, and you wonder how in the world is this team in first place? I mean, they're a good ball club. You know, number wise, you got you look at him and say you can understand that. Well, when they come out there and little flare, shallow center, Marvin Bernard diving and makes the play. And the runners will get back that wind blowing it in. But aren't a long way to go. And snow cone that one to get Ventura. The wind in center field raced really that ball back toward the infield. Bernard never gave up, never gave up. The shortstop was right behind him. That ball popped away. They would have had Peyton at third base. No place for Peyton to go in that situation. There you can see Jay Payton heading back to second. Shortstop right behind him. They would have gotten an out somewhere. They're talking about a ball club that's in first place. How in the world can you walk nights? Sometimes they just look off. And nine walks by the staff for the Giants tonight. You say, how are they in first place? When the club does that, you wonder how they're in first place. Their problem has been at the especially the first half the middle relief and it still is they've gotten in if they can get to it but the middle relievers have not done well overall their staff is 11th in the league in walks and that's why their starters get pushed to go as deep as they can get them strike at the inside corner to Bordick who really can't believe that one two strike count on him Getty was saying before the game the difference between the first half and what we've done since the All-Star break has been the distance our starters have taken us in the game. If we can get late in the ball game, we're okay. But if we have to go three, four pitchers in a game, we're in trouble. That one inside is not a strike. One and two. And what he was talking about is pitchers. You got to stay out there. You got to be out there through seven innings. Don't make us come get you in the seventh inning. If we come getting you, somebody's going to be on the base. You want to win a ball game, 
Get us to the eighth inning. Get us deep. Get out of that inning. Real good point. Bordick takes that one. Two ball, two strike count. Bordick's hit 301 off left handers. This is the matchup the Mets would want. He's hit right handers well, too, but the matchup is in the Mets' favor here. Two ball, two strike count with Bell waiting on deck. There are two down. We're in the eighth inning. Mets with a 3 2 lead. Peyton on second base and Hamilton on first. 2 2. Jammed him. Stayed right in there. And Embry gets the strikeout. That will end the inning. Little rain delay. Got to keep the little one up a little later, maybe, than desired. But hey, hang with them. Stay for a win. And Armando Benitez is on. He has been lately untouchable. If you look at his numbers, I mean, he is a workhorse, workhorse and coming in, he's going to pitch one inning. He's been untouchable. Nothing. Come on and blow it by him. Here it is. Hit it if you can. ERA last 18 games, zero. Rios first at bat. Fouls it back. He has not permitted an earned run the last 20 innings, spanning 19 appearances. He's third, tied for third in the league, and fourth in the majors with 28 saves. Leads the majors in games finished with 50. Armando Rios, his first at bat. All he's got to do is face Benitez. Pitch misses down low. One ball, one strike count. The Mets with a 3 2 lead, trying to take game two. One of the things that Armando Benitez does to a the opposition. It almost as if it makes it an eight inning game. If I can get to the eighth, in, eighth hey. inning with, ahead with Benitez, your history. Now, Dusty Baker feels the same way about his book with Rod Nen. But when you have this kind of closure, a guy that could just physically dominate you, it in essence becomes an eight inning game when you're at home. One, two delivery. Rios fouls it back and late on the fastball. You could like put that on a recording, Tom, and when Benitez comes to pitch, just keep pushing the button. Yep, late, late on, on the, the fastball. fastball. And not only is it just a fastball, it's in that mid 90s range, but great movement at the hitting zone. Rios, center field, is going to fall in for a base hit. That one looked like might have gotten it up, and it was about an 84, 85 mile an hour pitch. Maybe a slider. What Todd Pratt set up inside, they were trying to go inside to him on that pitch. They've been throwing him away and away and away late on the fastball. And then something out and over the plate. Either the splitter or the slider. The GM turning point in the game. Yeah, the double down that right field line by Todd Zeal. And that drove in a couple of runs. That was a two-strike double right down on that corner. And the Mets took the lead. They still have it three to two. Go ahead RBI right now. Now the bunt. And he tried to push that over Ventura's head. Rather than trying to get the ball down for a sacrifice, he saw Ventura coming. And Marvin Bernard tried to push that by him or over him. Lenny Jackson with the signs at third. If he, he may have been doing that just to try to bump the ball for a base hit over Ventura's head. The old adage about playing one on the road, tie at home. Bernard did not show bunt there, one and one. That could have been a complete decoy trying to get Ventura in there and trying to pop it over his head. The only people that know that are Dusty Baker and Marvin Bernard. Bobby Thompson, coach at first, talked with Rios to make sure he knows what's on here. One one popped him up, second base. Alfonso. The wind is in the favor of the Mets here tonight, too, blowing straight in and blowing very briskly. That ball came back 30 feet for Edgardo Alfonso. One thing that Rios hit did, it potentially, it gives the Giants a chance to get to Bonds in this inning. High fastball. 
And as many hitters would do, they drop that backside, hit the bottom half of the ball because they're trying to catch up with a good fastball. Bill Miller takes a strike. Couple of walks, two in the game for Miller. Benitez would just as soon have the double play and get it over right here, not have to face Bonds. Miller's gone two for two off Benitez in the times he's faced him. third base by Miller. There's Bonds. He's trying to time Benitez in the on deck circle. And that pitch is taken down low. One and one to Miller. Obviously Benitez does not get a lot of ground ball double plays because not many guys hit ground balls or anything else of him. And a lot of times nobody's on too. See Bonds in the on deck circle like he's hitting. Taken one and two to Miller. Rios the runner. Miller the batter. Jackson the coach. One ball, two strikes, one down. Miller takes the heater away. It to a 2 2 count. Mets lead 3 2. Hampton, the pitcher of record for the Mets. Rodriguez, the first reliever, right now the pitcher of record for the Giants. He gave up a run, two hits, and in an inning of two thirds, walked two and struck out three. 2 2 delivery. Way outside, three and two. A big pitch. All of a sudden, this game isn't over. Giants have won three ball games in the ninth inning or later. Interesting here. Do you run the runner at first base? A strikeout pitcher on the mound. Bonds on deck. Not going left field. Daryl Hamilton. Two down. This is one reason why you don't go home until the last out in the game of baseball. The price of admission. One of the best hitters in the history of the game, Barry Bonds. I guess the guy that can officially get it to home plate. This is a great matchup right here. Game on the line, one run game, runner at first. Tying run at first, go ahead run at home plate. We were talking about stripping the game earlier. About having Benny Agbani come in and drive in the winning run after he handed that hand of that ball to the child in the seats and allowed a run to score that should not have scored. Good matchup right here. Bonds is 0 for 2 lifetime against Benitez. Last ball away, ball one. Runner at first, two down, ninth inning. Mets up by one. Giants won the first four games in San Francisco. Mets trying to take the first two here. Bonds a strike in the outside corner. Didn't like it. One and one. In the dirt. Pratt blocked it. That's probably a break for the Giants. Don't want that runner going down to second base, so you might want to put Bonds on, except the man behind him is the leading RBI guy, and Jeff Kent. Pretty good protection for Bonds this year with Kent batting in that cleanup spot. 2 1 delivery. That's a strike. 2 and 2.
Hampton gets the win. He is now 12 and 7. Felix Rodriguez will take the loss, and the save goes to Benitez. Two pitches away, and they finally went inside. What a job by Todd Pratt and Armando Benitez. Boy, they pitched perfectly right there. The Barry Bonds, that's the way to do it. 29th save of the season. There's your final as the Mets win it 3-2, to two, and they've won the first two games zeal with a game-winning RBI in this ball game. Another one-run win for the Mets. Our next Met telecast coming up tomorrow, 1 o'clock. Barry Bonds and company, the Giants, will be back. Now stay tuned for the WB11 news coming up.